Hello, everyone. We are live again. Yeah, we're doing this once again because I really wanted to test out a new character, a new AI character. Today, you're going to meet AI Tom Nook, who doesn't do any safety inspections or anything like that. His job is to appraise your islands to see how much they're worth. You know, you've been working really hard on your islands. You've been getting stuff done. You probably are curious. How many bells could you sell your island for if you wanted to sell it today after all this time you've put in? So that's what we're potentially going to find out about your islands. There's a form pinned at the top of chat. There is also a form, the same form, linked in the description below. And you can check that out and fill it out. It looks like a few of you already have. And we're going to use a random number picker to select your islands during the stream. We'll see what kind of trouble we get into. I think it's going to be fun. I was not expecting to stream today, but uh, I got all my stuff done. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I really want to test out this next character. So let's do it. Uh, so I'm seeing we have nine responses on the form. So I'm going to go ahead and I got it right here, actually. Uh, we have our random number picker up and running. And so we're going to pick out of, I'll pick out of 10. Maybe another one came in. Number five on the form. All right. So let's go ahead and pick out number five. We got it right here. Cool. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for being here. Finally able to catch a stream. Discovered your streams recently and enjoying them. Nice, Jenna. Thank you so much can't donate my dream code because I deleted mine due to a fear. Oh, well, uh, hopefully you get back into Animal Crossing soon, or I guess you just deleted your dream island. Hopefully you're not afraid of rumors that spread a very long time ago about dream islands getting shut down by Nintendo because that was very made up and not a real thing at all. Angela, thank you. The only reason your island would ever get pulled off of the network from Nintendo is if you put something on there that was against their terms. Like if you put a naked body on your flag, for example, something like that. Like you'd have to violate their policies, cuss words on your bulletin board, you know. That's the only reason that would happen. Um, okay, so search by dream address. We're going to pull up our first dream address of the day. 5608 two eight four three four five two six all right here we go we're going to the first island and it appears to be the island of ginger it's from egg and yolk who submitted their island thank you so much egg we're gonna see what tom nook thinks of your island how much is your island really worth? Through the power of AI Tom Nook, we will figure it out by the end of this island tour. Is Tom nicer than Digby? Digby was very nice. Digby did his job. And I think to a lot of people's benefit, he didn't do it very well. Won't be commenting because I'm doing chores. All right, well... <laughs> That's okay. All right, we're here. So, what do we got? Wow, this place looks really well decorated. Um, okay, we have a whole bunch of villagers and people. People, villagers, and villager, villagers. We have uh, <laughs> Ginger. We have Bill, Fauna. Bo, Diana, Molly, Zell, Raymond, Daisy, Olivia, and Bones. This is a very interesting island layout. I'm going to say those diagonal-looking paths at the top are like maybe farm, farmland. This place looks pretty cool. All right. Um, the island is called Ginger, right? Oh, we got an umbrella. Thank you for the umbrella. I appreciate this. A lot of people send me to rainy islands and never give me anything to keep myself dry. I think... This is going to be where we start bringing AI Tom Nook into the scene. All right, here we go. Okay, Tom, we're on our very first island. It's called Ginger, and it feels fully complete. 
all of the everything is paved. There are sidewalks and roads everywhere, and visitors are given an umbrella right off the bat, which is great because it is pouring rain. It's nighttime right now, but the streets are very well lit. A lot of street lights. There's roads that go in all directions, and it feels like this is a town that's been building up over several years. It is fully fleshed out. There's not a single bit of grass anywhere because it's just a completely finished set of paths and little areas to go in and hang out. But there are trees and shrubs and hedges and things like that as well. All right. This is gorgeous. Yeah, I'm I am just uh I'm just completely shocked. Like I I want to just spend all the time here. Let's see what Tom thinks of your entrance. Oh, splendid, splendid. A well-paved town is indeed a sight to behold. Mm -hmm. Umbrellas handed out right at the start signals a thoughtful soul who understands island life can be unpredictable. The lighted paths on a rainy night give it a very picturesque look, quite appealing indeed. But the lack of grass? Hmm. I must admit, I find it a bit unsettling. Hmm. Homes must be one with nature. Yes, yes. And no grass. Well... Grass reminds our residents that we're on a vibrant and thriving island and not in a concrete jungle. It will surely need some regreening, I reckon. Good thing there are trees, shrubs, and hedges. They certainly soften the landscape. Ho ho! Now, just to scratch this <laughs> mosquito bite. Ah, relief. Let's continue. <laughs> okay. So I I thought Tom was gonna be excited about all the paved roads. He has his doubts about the grass. I feel like this might be like a toy store or something. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna go inside and check this out and I'll report back. Oh, it's Daisy's house. Okay. Wow. It's pretty adorable. So I, I won't now I'm not gonna say it's a toy store. It looks like it's actually a home someone lives in. I was not sure if we were gonna get like a cash register or something like that. Um but all right. It is a really nice island. So I've just stopped by Daisy's house, and it's really adorable in here. There is just a lot of kid core kind of furniture, and there's a couple of gyroids hanging out and cheering Daisy on anytime she goes to craft anything. And just outside is a playground. So just the the kid core vibes kind of extend out here and you get to a little sandy area and there's jungle gyms and there's little tricycles and all kinds of toys and you know daisy's got her car parked outside out of the way and a bicycle so sometimes riding bikes sometimes driving around and uh yeah i i think the first house i've seen on this island is pretty cool I didn't know what to say about the car and the the bike and stuff. I wanted to I wanted to just give him a good picture of everything that was over here, but I got as soon as I started saying, mentioning, I'm like, what what am I talking about the car for? <laughs> ho ho! Daisy's place sounds like a delightful retreat with all the joy filled kid core items. Those gyroids, though, quite the peculiar companions, if you ask me. They still give me the heebie-jeebies from that club situation. But what? I'm glad Daisy finds comfort in them. Sorry? The playground and all those toys are a nice touch. Blossoms the imagination. Yes, yes, but wait. A car and a bicycle? Vehicles on my island? Now that diminishes the value quite substantially. What? We aim for the natural, not mechanical. I don't even want to imagine the oil stains and tire tracks they're leaving behind. It's affecting the natural balance. Oh, these mosquitoes are really getting itchy. The car, bicycle, and gyroids may subtract a little from the appraisal, but nonetheless, I'm interested in seeing the rest. Moving along now, ho ho. <laughs> okay. Um, there's obviously something going on with Tom Nook and gyroids. I don't know what the club situation is. I don't know if we'll find out. Um, I Maybe I won't mention the gyroid concert? I probably should. If we want a good appraisal, I should give a very clear picture. Um, but anyway, let's let's keep going. Uh, it looks like the island starts to become more natural up north here. Maybe I should be saying this to him. 
All right, well, just uh, so you know, it looks like the island does become a lot more natural as you go up to the north. There's some woods and some very natural-looking paths that kind of wind through some trees as you get potentially lost in a forest. And in here, there are some homes, and there's all kinds of adorable mushroom lights and flowers, all kinds of stuff to see back here, uh, a little more north on the island. Oh, wow. We got like a whole castle. Ah, uh, the great north. The woods, the winding paths, nature reclaiming its ground. That sure sounds like a delightful sight indeed. The mushroom lights, quite enchanting, perhaps even magical, would you say? And the flowers, ah, Mother Nature's own paint palette. All sorts of colors, I'm sure. The born ensign, that's a good touch too. It's always nice to have a sense of origin when you're in the middle of nature. Very intriguing, yes, yes. Would add a great deal of value to the overall appraisal, despite those pesky vehicular distractions. <laughs> oh dear, these mosquito bites are getting worse. Let's continue, shall we? <laughs> Sounds like Tom has a really big mosquito problem. All right, well, I have to tell you about the castle. Now, I wasn't allowed to go inside the castle, but it's really big. It's really nice. There's even a couple more cars here. One of them made of pure, solid gold. That's got to be worth something. As you appraise this island, I imagine you're going to be pretty impressed with that. And it's really cool because the castle backs up to the ocean. So I bet you if I was allowed to go inside, I'd get some spectacular oceanfront views. These little plazas are so cool. I'm trying to go to another area now. I just don't know how to get there. I guess we're on the edge of the island here. A castle, you say? Oh my, that's sure to attract quite a large amount of friendly visitors. But those cars, they're like an unwanted itch you can't shake off. Just like these blasted mosquitoes. <laughs> Even if they're gleaming gold, they're an enclosed reminder of the industrial sprawl from which we've sought escape on these tranquil islands. As for the oceanfront views, well, I would indeed expect nothing less from a grand castle such as this. Value will be added for these assets, however. Okay. The cars, including the golden one, will come with a deduction. Wow. Moving along. Ho ho. Even the gold car. He's saying he's not going to he's not going to give you a favorable appraisal on the, on the gold car. Um all right, what else can we tell him about? This place is just so gorgeous. I'm trying to find other landmarks specifically to, to name here. The campsite um the campsite by a pond. That's yeah, really nice. Buck spray for Tom. <laughs> um, okay. I think... In terms of, like, giving him details and stuff, I don't know what else to tell him. Uh, there's a farm. Okay, you might want to know about that. I've now made it to a new section of the island where there is a sprawling farm with tons and tons of different crops. We have some different machinery like uh, tractors and other tools to, you know, m help maintain the farm. And I've also seen around the island, just in general, a number of motorized scooters that people can use to kind of get around. The island feels humongous, despite it being pretty similar in size to other Animal Crossing islands. There's just so much to see and everything fits in so nicely. It's so cool. This is like a jaw-dropping first island that we're on. A farm, you say? It's indeed heartening to hear about such gastronomic diversity and self-sustainability. <laughs> However, the tractors and machinery... Ah, the sight of automated machinery unfortunately goes against our peaceful island getaway aesthetic. And motorized scooters, too? My word, the vehicular proliferation is indeed worrisome. However, <laughs> the farm, I must say, adds quite a homely feel, which indeed merits some value in this appraisal. Yes, yes. And despite the flurry of motorized scooters, the overall layout and fitting in of structures is to be indeed commended. 
Oh, such rowdy mosquitoes. We must be nearing the end of this appraisal. Ho, ho. <laughs> okay. Let's let him know that it's over and he can give us his final assessment of the island. Okay, Tom. Well, we have indeed reached the end of our tour. Now, there is one area I forgot to tell you about. That is the gyroid concert. It did sit there greeting me as I came to the island. It's just as it, it sounds like. It's a bunch of gyroids with seating, and you can go listen to them in, you know, in their choir singing their little songs. But listen, now it's time for you to take everything you've learned about this island and give us the final valley, the final appraisal. All right, Tom. What's it going to be? Okay. Here we go. How much does Tom Nook think your island is worth? I should probably get ready to write this down. Gyroid concert? Oh dear. The memories that evokes chilling, yes, yes. Nonetheless, I will appraise this island with professional integrity. This island, as you've described it, has many wonderful features. A well-paved town with cozy homes, splashes of childlike joy, enchanting north woods, a majestic castle, and a sprawling farm. Quite an eclectic mix, I must say. Ho, ho. However, certain detractions cannot be overlooked. The swaths of vehicles scattered around do bring down the value quite a bit, no matter their glitzy appearances. Not to mention the lingering horror of the gyroid concert, taking me back to a time of frantic flights and fanatic followers. And we certainly can't forget the need for some regreening. While keeping all these in mind, especially the hefty deductions for the vehicles, my final appraisal comes to a total of 1,925,000 bells. The overall unique charm and aesthetic sense of this island cannot be disregarded, but neither can the inconsistencies that break away from our dear island ethos. A fair valuation for a most intriguingly beautiful, yet unconventional island? Wouldn't you say, ho ho? Now off to find a remedy for these mosquito bites. All right, well, congratulations. You are in the lead right now, egg and yolk. 1,925,000 bells is what your island appraises at via AI Tom Nook. Congratulations. You must be so excited. All right. I want to get to the next island. The cat is in the way. All right, we're going to keep track of what all the islands are worth. And we're going to see which island turns out to be the most valuable by the end of this. Maybe instead of calling it Island 1, I'll call it like the by the name. So it's called Ginger. That way we'll have a better better attribution there. Ginger. Okay. Uh this cat. Not interested in the window. All right, we're going to search for Dream Address, and we're going to look and see how many. We have 33 now. <laughs> Come on. All right. Uh, so i got to update the number picker. Twenty nine. Okay. Number twenty nine. All right, got it right here. Don't do that. All right, nine one oh nine. Stop, stop it. Okay, there we go.
It is the island of Tiki Land from Squeakamus. Squeakamus. All right. That is the next island. What's the cat's name today? Hmm. What do you guys want to name the cat today? It's up to you. Mouser? Yeah, right. All right, yeah. Mouser, sure. <laughs> Sir Paws? I missed one of the residents living in the jungle. <laughs> that would have been a good thing to note, for sure. Tiki Land. Okay. We're here on Tiki Land. Oh, wow. I like that flag. We'll check the map first. Where we have Eric, Tia, Meringue, Ketchup, Zucker, Tangy, Roswell, Anka, Raymond, and Chai. Very well um, laid out island, it looks like. Let's see what we got. Vaulting pole. Okay. All right, so it looks like, let's see. My initial description should probably go straight to Tom Nook, so here we go. All right, Tom, we're now on our second island. It's called Tiki Land, and one of the first things that happened is when I got here, I was handed a vaulting pole. I'm not exactly sure where I'm going to need that yet. Now, Tiki Land is known, seemingly, for its dirt roads, and there are a lot of them spreading across town. And despite the dirt road vibes, uh, it is pretty well organized there's a lot of stuff for example there's a sign warning you of a duck crossing and there are indeed ducks around the road so it is it is good to have a warning uh there's also a nearby playground by the entrance which is pretty cool and we have the tailor shop not too far away as well by the airport are a whole bunch of things greeting new visitors. As soon as they get off their flight, they're offered some food, some free recipes before they go. And uh, there's a pumpkin patch also immediately greeting you when you jump off the plane. I don't think Digby would like the dirt roads. That's true. Am I allowed to see the house? I am. I want to go in here. Tiki Land, now that sounds like an adventure awaiting. The vaulting pole implies there's much to explore beyond the eye's reach, an adventurous touch. Dirt roads have a rustic feel, which I do appreciate. A sign warning you of a duck crossing. Now that's charming and quite considerate for our feathered friends. Yes, yes. Plus, it's always delightful to see a playground. It stimulates the youthful spirit in everyone and tailors nearby, handy indeed. Having a welcoming area like you described is a fantastic idea. Everyone loves food and free recipes, a grand encouragement for all budding chefs, and a pumpkin patch greeting is such a wholesome sight. Very autumnal indeed. Ho ho! Despite the island's intriguing name, it sounds like quite a charming place if I say so. And, ah, these itch. Those relentless mosquitoes. But let's continue, shall we? Okay, so far, Tom's liking the island. Um, I don't think the interior of your house would be fair to have, you know graded by by tom nook and his island rating service oh wow he might he might like that you've decorated the bathroom with his logo everywhere though all right remember that pumpkin patch i mentioned well i'm now inside the house that hosts that pumpkin patch and it's pretty cozy you will notice as soon as you walk in the very big holiday tr decorations and the, the christmas tree and all that stuff it's January. It's like mid-January at this point. So they haven't removed any of their decorations yet, which is uh, interesting. But I went into the bathroom. Tom, your logo is everywhere in here. Like, it's plastered all over the walls. Anywhere a logo could go, it's there in this bathroom. This person's a fan. I couldn't think of the word presents. I remember the big present pile, like uh, holiday decoration. What is that? 
the holiday decorations. How delightful. And they've kept them up past the season. Ho, ho. Nothing wrong with stretching the merriment a tad longer. Yes, yes. And oh, steering into my aspect of things, the bathroom filled with my logo. An ardent fan indeed. Quite flattering to see such devotion, I must admit. Though I can't help but chuckle at the thought of my face adorning a bathroom. The homely vibe and touch of loving fandom does contribute positively to my appraisal. And oh, have I mentioned how much these mosquitoes itch recently? <laughs> Let's proceed, shall we? <laughs> yes, you've mentioned the mosquitoes. Um, oh, wow. I think this is like every KK album, like on the walls. Well, it looks like the house also features a secret underground club of sorts. There's instruments and a stage. There's like every KK album ever invented, invented, ever published, hanging on the walls. And it just seems like a really chill time down here. I threw myself off saying the word invented, <laughs> recorded. <laughs> A secret underground club, how exquisite. And instruments on a stage, a wonderful setup for a lively party, wouldn't you say? Ho ho? The KK albums? Well, those are a piece of art in their own right. Combining the rhythm of music with a secret chill spot sounds like an inviting mix of merriment and tranquility. Yes, yes, oh, very itchy. These mosquitoes. <laughs> but let's continue, shall we? <laughs> Don't mention the shiny things, please. What do you mean? I didn't even... I didn't see any shiny things anyway. Um. <laughs> I think something that's shiny is probably going to get his attention. Oh, wow. Look at the woods back there. Oh, is this a, is this some kind of like alien artifact or something? There's like something going on here in the woods. Don't need high dazzle risk. <laughs> that was, that was Digby's thing. I think Tom would find dazzle probably very helpful. UFO sounds like a machine. He would hate it. I don't know. It's, it's a visitor from another world. I, I think that would add value, right? Tourism. Tom, I got to know, if we were on this island and I told you that it was actively being invaded by aliens, do you think that would add to the value or do you think that would lower the value? I'm thinking it would bring in more tourism, personally. Ah, an alien invasion. Now, that's not something you hear about every day, ho-ho. Huh? While it's certainly an interesting feature, for the purpose of our tranquil island getaway philosophy, I must disagree with you. An alien <laughs> invasion might indeed prove to be quite exciting to some folks out there, but the added stress and potential destruction it could bring to this peaceful <laughs> island life may indeed devalue the overall experience we're aiming for. Yes, yes. These mosquitoes, such an alien nuisance. <laughs> but let's not let them or your alien invasion distract us from our task. Shall we move along now? Okay. <laughs> Tom Nook didn't like the alien invasion, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> Mosquito alien. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. There's a bicycle. I saw a motorized scooter earlier, too. Um, oh, here we go. Oh. Gyroid garden. Okay, we gotta go see what that's all about. And then we are on the beach. Wow. I was walking around the neighborhood some more. I saw a bicycle. At one point I did also see a motorized scooter, but... I went through a pipe, a warp pipe, and it launched me onto a beach 
where there was clearly something going on, some kind of party happening on this beach. Uh, it has since been vacated. They left their campfire running. They have, you know, a lot of their valuables just kind of sitting out. Maybe they're going exploring. Just behind this uh, adorable beach setup is a gyroid garden. You know how people, like, plant their gyroids into the ground so they can become whole gyroids? Yeah, one of those. And behind that is a big old fruit orchard that's been completely organized so that it's really easy to find what type of fruit you want. And it's unguarded. It looks like anyone can come in here and just enjoy fruit whenever they want. So we're back at the entrance. I think I've given Tom a lot to work with, but I'll just, for myself, just kind of go into a couple other parts here. A neighborhood wilderness. How fascinating. The sight of a bicycle and a motorized scooter does distress me a bit. But on we go. The teleportation to a beach party? What a playful and unexpected surprise. Although an attended campfire worries me a bit. Safety first, yes, yeah. The gyroid <laughs> garden on one hand, it sends a shudder down my spine. Reminds me so much of, uh -oh. well, let's not dwell on that. An unguarded fruit orchard sounds like a friendly and open community space. It's a delightful sight for the island's residents and visitors alike especially those who have a penchant for fresh fruit. These mosquitoes are persistently itchy. The only downfall in these island travels. Ho, ho, let's move on, shall we? Okay. <laughs> I got to tell him about the, the massive pirate treasure area. Before we end the tour, I want you to know that there's also, on the back corner of the island, really far away from everything else, an area full of pirate treasure, guarded by cannons, and back there is a whole bunch of gold and coins and all kinds of stuff, like human remains. So they're hiding a lot of really cool stuff on this island uh, behind some coconut trees. I almost missed it, if I'm being honest. <laughs> Let's move on, shall we? The guy who brings up mosquitoes every time. <laughs> yeah, Tom. Let's move on. A treasure on. trove guarded by cannons. Now that's a thrilling discovery, full of gold and coins. Very pirate esque. Gives the island an adventurous flair, indeed. Although human remains, interesting choice. Slightly morbid, wouldn't you agree? Ho ho. Hidden amidst the coconut trees, it adds an air of intrigue. Yet the potential danger could be a tad disconcerting. Yes, yes. But then every adventurer likes a little challenge. That's certainly a fascinating detail to the island's essence. Oh, such pesky mosquitoes. Time for the final <laughs> appraisal soon. <laughs> He's like so over it. Yes, Tom, it's time for the final appraisal. Jeez, calm down. All right, let's get back there. All right, here we go. What does Apologies Tom think? for the haste, but indeed, it's appraisal time. Upon a careful evaluation of Tiki Land, it certainly possesses some delightful qualities. A rustic ambiance, a cozy fan-filled home, a secret underground club, a lively beach setup, and a fruitful, open community orchard. But of course, <laughs> it has its oddities. The lingering holiday decorations, the gyroid garden, chills, my friend, chills, and the treasure trove guarded by cannons, and slight distractions with bicycles and scooters. Balancing all these factors in mind and considering all the opportunities and peculiarities Tiki Land offers, I venture to put the final price at a generous 1,770,000 bells. Wow. It still boasts an individualistic charm, albeit with room for essential improvements. Yes, yes. Now, on to the next adventure and hopefully fewer mosquito bites. <laughs> okay. Yeah, let's hope the next island has less mosquitoes, I guess. Um, okay, so there we go. Tiki. Tiki Land is at 1,770,000 bells. You didn't quite make it. Ginger is still in the lead, but congratulations, Tiki Land. All right, it's on to the next, hopefully less mosquito-filled island. <laughs> Get that poison bug spray. Has anyone figured out who the voice of Tom Nook is yet? Ha <laughs> ha. 
<laughs> no, it's not me. <laughs> River got it, like, instantly. Yeah, it's Cleo. <laughs> How is it Paul Rudd? Why, why would it be? That doesn't sound anything. Have you watched a Paul Rudd movie? All right. Did it sound familiar? That was me. I... I did, like, the most nasally voice I could do, and then I pitched it up a little bit. And then the software pitched it up further, so then it became unrecognizable. Okay, how many? We have 43 islands submitted. So I've updated the number picker. And, uh... 41! All right. Five, three, seven, three, one, six. No, nope, that's the end of it. Five, three, seven, three, nine, six, eight, five, one, six, three, six. I do feel like I'm going to have to move these numbers up to like here. Yeah, that's better. Okay. Mary Bay. Okay. You would need to resubmit if you submitted for Dignity, yes. The form was cleared. Uh, thanks for asking. I did forget to mention that. All right, we've made it. Mary Bay. It looks like it's going to be a holiday-themed island. Ace, Stu, Norma, Jacques, Yuka, Marina, Sparkle, Quinn, Azalea, and Murphy. All organized there at the top with the player's home sitting up there as well. Wow, very, very organized island. I, I love a symmetrical island. Okay, Tom, island number three. We've arrived at Mary Bay, kind of like Merry Christmas. This is a holiday-themed island. Upon arrival, I immediately notice all of the holiday lights and glit-up glowing holiday decorations, and I was given an outfit upon my arrival. It looks like it's going to be a Santa outfit, which is pretty exciting. I was also given a vaulting pole and a ladder, so I think I'm going to need to... Uh, do a little bit of aerobics or something while I'm here, which intimidates me a little bit. This is really cool. Ah, Mary Bay, a holiday themed island. The radiant decorations, twinkling lights, that holiday spirit in the air, quite an enchanting first impression indeed. A Santa outfit too. Sounds like a festive time in store. Ho ho. <laughs> the vaulting pole and ladder are likely for exploring the island. Seems like there could be some elevation differences or secret sections. Might be quite the workout, but also quite the adventure. Always got to love a bit of mystery. Yes, yes. Let's continue, my friend. Just let me scratch these mosquito bites for a bit. Ho. Oh. <laughs> oh my oh my goodness um okay so <laughs> uh we've already found uh, a couple of gyroids that i'm I, I don't know i'm a little bit nervous to tell him about i know how much he doesn't like those uh let's see finally the ho-ho makes sense <laughs> uh, a lot of sores 
Oh, look, uh, Holiday Hotel. Okay, huh. So this is clearly a facade, though. Hmm. What's this? It's a bakery? It is a bakery. Mary Bay Bakery. Um, also a facade. Hmm. Okay. So I headed up north a bit and I found a couple of different businesses. There was a hotel and there was a bakery and there's probably some other ones around here as well. But I ran into the neighborhood before I can find them. In fact, I think here's one now. We have a tire shop. And also a mall, a shopping mall. Here's the thing, though, Tom. I'm a little bit suspicious because I think these buildings are all a facade. I think they're made to look like buildings. But from what I can tell, you can't actually get inside any of them. It just kind of looks like somebody took pictures of a building and kind of plastered them on to like cliff sides and stuff. So I'm not sure how you feel about that. It does look cool though. It makes it feel like a big city, which is kind of neat. I will say that the neighborhood where all the villagers live does indeed seem real though. Can we go inside this house? No, oh man, <laughs> it, it's, it looks really nice. All right. Businesses do liven up consumer spirits, that's true. A hotel, a bakery, a tire shop, and a shopping mall, quite the variety. Even if they're facades, I must admit from a distance, they enhance the vibe of a bustling city. However, since these buildings can't be accessed by the residents or visitors, it's a bit of a letdown. Yes, yes, a faux city, so to say. <laughs> I do need to point out that in terms of an island lifestyle, real accessible establishments are richer experiences. Good to hear the neighborhood <laughs> is indeed real. That's where the heart of the community lies, very important for the living experience. Now let's carry on with the rest of our tour. Ho ho, just swatted away another mosquito. <laughs> Pesky little things. <laughs> Jeez. Um. <laughs> uh, okay, so Tom prefers real buildings. He thinks those add to the experience of living on an island. I, I tend to agree. Uh, this is pretty cool, though. I'm trying to figure out what how I describe this. Is it a pool? Is it a lake? I like it a lot. It's just difficult to explain. Pesky little things. <laughs> Is it? I wonder. There's no comma there or anything. It's just pesky little things. And the way it read it out loud was pesky little things. There's super mosquitoes. Just outside the city are some lovely nature walks. You'll see the occasional lit up decoration, holiday decoration, uh, gyroid guarding a pile of presents. And also a house that looks suspiciously like Santa's workshop, but I am not able to access it. It does look like a real building, but for some reason I've been forbidden from going inside. So I'm not really sure what they're hiding. It says on the form I can't go inside. I thought he should know. Ah, nature walks. They certainly add a touch of serenity after the bustling city-themed area. Lovely indeed. Holiday decorations and presents do add a cheerful outlook to the place. Wait, gyroids guarding them? <laughs> Suddenly, the cheerfulness takes a strange, chilling turn. <laughs> Ever since the incident, gyroids give me a mildly uncomfortable feeling. Ho ho, a house that mirrors Santa's workshop? Intriguing. Yet, the forbidden entrance, you say, does add a bit of a mysterious aura. One must wonder what lies within that workshop. Mystery can indeed be enticing, but it's important we maintain full transparency for our residents and visitors alike. Ready to proceed? Let's swat these mosquitoes away and move along. Shall we? Ho, ho. <laughs> uh. Ah, nature walks. 
<laughs> okay. So I think it's time to ask Tom for his evaluation of the island. I, I think we are just about there. I, I didn't mention all the gyroids I saw or anything like that. This island's lovely. I'm really glad we're seeing this. While it's still relatively close to the holiday season, <laughs> uh, this is this is really cool. I like this a lot. Uh, so I hope Tom likes it. Let's uh, Let's see what he has to say. All right, Tom, now that you know everything there is to know about Mary Bay, what is your appraisal? All right. Will it be a new first place winner? Will they beat out Ginger? 1.9 million. They're changing their mind. You could tour the house. It's too late. <laughs> ah, Mary Bay, a holiday escape radiating merry feelings year round. From your descriptions, the island seems to be brimming with holiday spirit, eye-catching decorations, intriguing facades of bustling city life, and delightful nature walks. The enchanted vibe of Santa's inaccessible workshop adds an air of mystery, but I mustn't forget the unease brought on by the guarding gyroids nor the ivory tower-like inaccessible facades of buildings. <laughs> Taking it all into account, the final appraisal of Mary Bay comes to a total of 1,500,000 bells. Despite its charm and unique holiday theme, the limitations in accessibility and the unnerving presence of gyroids do impact the value somewhat. <laughs> it's a unique island with much to love, but some improvements could indeed raise its value. Yes, yes. Now where's that anti-itch cream for these mosquito bites? Ho, ho. <laughs> All right. So you didn't quite get there. It's third place for you. There you go. 1.5 million for Mary Bay. Congratulations. They're all in order of the, when we visited, but they all happen to also be in order of like <laughs> the the mo the highest price to the least. I'm hoping that that trend will break soon. I want to see if we can get one up to two million. Okay. Let's go. Time to pick a new island. We have 51 islands submitted now. We're going to number 12. Okay. Everyone's islands are very unique. How's it going, Artsy? How have you been? I submitted mine. Was it too late? Oh, no. You're good. Uh, we're still going for a bit. So island submission still coming in. A random number picker sometimes picks really late into the list. So you just never know. And then 6014. It's the Island of Pineapple. The username is just the letter K. But congratulations to K. We're going to the Island of Pineapple. So I'm going to go ahead and just add pineapple to our list right now. <laughs> Kay's like, yay, all right, cool. I think the flag is a pineapple. All right. We have Sly, Faith, Shep, Pate, Pate, rather, I don't know, I don't know which. Uh, Octavian B. Cherry, or is that Sherry? I think it's uh, Cherry. I don't know. Flora, Norma, Judy. And uh, wow, a lot of uh, 
big, big water areas here. All right. Pate. Pate? Put How about putty? Okay, whoa, look at that. Airport very, very close to resident services here. Custom path connecting the two. All right. Our next island is called Pineapple, and they have a flag with a pineapple on it. So all of it's coming together here. We have a path that connects resident services to the airport. Both of these buildings, very, very close together. If we head to the left resident services, we find the museum. We find Nook's Cranny sitting right next to it. And then across the river, we have a path that goes down. And there's a really lovely field of flowers just to the south leading on to a beach. It also looks like some paw prints are on the beach and they're going right into the little flower garden area. There's no beast in sight, but these paw prints are worrying me a little bit. I think there's a monster loose on this island. Aliens? It could be aliens. Ah, Pineapple. Oh. I do love it when island names and the welcoming flag match up. Having the important services closely linked up, the airport, resident services, museum, and Nook's Cranny is certainly a practical arrangement. The field of flowers leading to a beach? Soothing, I must say. And such a delightful sight indeed. However, these paw prints do sound a bit concerning. Even if, as you've observed, it reveals the presence of some form of elusive fauna. Adds a bit of mystery, doesn't it, Ho-Ho? A possibly loose monster, you say? Let's hope safety precautions have been put in place for the resident. <laughs> Let's press on with more details. But first, let me deal with these mosquitoes. Oh, how they itchy they are. <laughs> what? Oh, how they itchy they are. That's what it says. <laughs> okay. Um, I've made my way up north to the neighborhood where every villager lives. They live in pretty close proximity to one another. There's paths linking all their houses up. And in the middle of this villager cul-de-sac, there is a big pond and a waterfall that spills into a smaller pond. And it looks pretty nice. I think this is a fruit orchard, but it's been picked clean. Ah, the cohabitational harmony of the villagers living in a close-knit neighborhood with easy access paths sounds very well planned and convenient indeed. The centerpiece of a sizable pond with its waterfall cascading into a smaller pond in the midst of the neighborhood adds a certain charm and tranquility. Water bodies do have a calming influence. Yes, yes, this sounds like a serene touch to the residential area. Very itching, very itching, these mosquitoes. But let's move along with the rest of the tour of Pineapple. Ho, ho. Okay. Um, the island is full of big, wide open spaces. I will say that. We visited a lot of densely packed cities on this tour. But right now I'm finding there are a lot of areas that are spread out. Or a lot of space between areas, rather. There's also a house up in the corner, and it leads to a campsite. The thing about this campsite is the only way to get to it is by carefully jumping across a big lake. There's a bunch of little stepping stones that lead in different directions. And so if you are visiting, there's a very good chance you're going to be swimming to your tent, whether you like it or not. A lot of tents out here in, the, in this lake. Quite a contrast with the previous densely packed islands indeed. Wide open spaces provide room for nature to thrive and invite the residents to explore freely. The house corner leading to a campsite paints an intriguing picture. But the obstacle course in the form of stepping stones across a big lake? That's a bit of an adventurous hurdle, wouldn't you say? Ho ho, a bit problematic if a visitor isn't quite up to the task. <laughs> Though it does sharpens navigational skills. Yes, yes, quite the interesting island pineapple is. Let's continue exploring, shall we? Oh, these itchy mosquitoes. Hmm. <laughs> okay.
All right. Um, I'm just trying to see. Surf shop. Okay. All right. All right. Good to know. So surf shop by the beach. What happened to that guy? Do you mean the campsite visitor? Yeah, I think I think with everyone having to swim to their tents, you gotta give them a pass, you know. Let's see, uh, a lot of a lot of little islands here and there, houses that we're not allowed to go in. <laughs> okay, I think we're just about ready. I'm gonna mention a couple more things and then invite Tom to give his appraisal. Just a couple more things before we wrap up our tour. I did find a surf shop next to the beach, so they sell surfboards and things like that. And I found what I think is a fruit orchard, but all the trees have been picked clean. So really, it's just a bunch of trees. Anyway, it's time for you to give your appraisal. What value do you place upon the island of pineapple? All right. Here comes Tom Nook. Check out one more beach. This one? The surf shop by the beach seems a perfect fit. Ideal for oh. those looking to ride the waves. Quite the fitting feature for island living. Ho ho! As for the fruit orchard, it brings forth a sense of community sustenance, even if it has been harvested already. Good planning. Yes, yes. Now, considering our tour of pineapple, from the directly accessible services, close-knit villager neighborhood with its tranquil pond, riddle of the paw prints, the vast open spaces, and more, alongside the slight challenges with accessing the campsite and the mystery of the completely harvested fruit orchard, I would value pineapple at a wholesome 1,700,000 bells. A delightful mix right. of communal living and nature-rich spaces, along with a dash of mystery and adventure. Quite charming, don't you agree, Ho-Ho? Now, let me find some relief for these persistent mosquito bites. All right. Well, there you go. 1.7 million for the island of pineapple. You're in third place. Congratulations. I ran right over the turtle nest. We have 57 on the forum now. Fifty-seven. So, let's roll it. Thirty-three. All right, number thirty-three. Okay, got my next dream address. It's three nine five six. Oops. Two one one two. Two, four, six, five. It's the Island of Symphony from, yes, Neon, who's here. All right. Here we go. Oh. 
All right. Let's see what we got. Uh, it is Tybalt, Bunny, Meringue, Kyle, Mary, Zucker, Olivia, Sky, Butch, and Lolly all spread out for the most part. Okay. Tons of paths everywhere. Wow. This island's awesome. Love the flag. Let's see. A little present area here right by the airport. All the different types of paths. I am allowed inside the houses if I would like to go into one. I, I think we'll go into this one. It's right here. I always make sure my island is at golden hour when I update it. <laughs> it is a really good time to do that. Love this house. Ooh. Very well decorated kitchen here. Okay, what else? Here's the bathroom. Wow. Looks really good. I'm studying for a career in interior design, so I went a bit ham. <laughs> well, paid off. Here's the bedroom, or a bedroom. Looks awesome. Head upstairs. Another bedroom up here, looking amazing. Love the windows. Trophies, that's great. Let's pop into the basement. Wow. Very fancy. I had to make so many glow in those dark stickers you wouldn't believe. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Okay. All right. Let's keep it going. So, wow. We have a very well laid out island. I should probably start letting Tom know about all the things I'm seeing. I just don't even know how to, like, begin to describe it. My goodness. All right, Tom, we're on our next island. It's called Symphony, and it's very difficult for me to describe because as soon as we got here, there was just so much going on. There are roads going in all different directions. They took the time to put down a bunch of different types of paths leading to different areas. It looks really, really nice. Just to the left of Resident Services is a place called Rainbow Cafe, and it is indeed a cafe. There are a few vending machines, and there's places to sit, and there's some snacks outside that you can start eating right away, which is pretty welcoming. We also have a display featuring a bunch of high fashion. Right here by the tailor shop is an area where you can come by, you can see mannequins dressed in a whole bunch of fashion trends, I'm sure, and... Even though there's snow on the ground, the mannequins are wearing short sleeves, which just speaks to the high-quality fabric used on the dresses that the mannequins are wearing, I believe. Yeah. I'm trying to score you some points, you know?
Got to get you a good evaluation. <laughs> ah, symphony. A place of harmonious living, I presume. The variety of paths must make it an intriguing maze of journeys. Attention to detail does add an extra touch of appeal for visitors. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Rainbow Cafe sounds like a delightful spot for some rest and refreshment. Such a vibrant name attracts merriment, does it not? And right near resident services, the heart of the island. How convenient. Ho, ho. High yeah. fashion next to the tailor shop. Quite elegant. Snow or not, style is forever. Yes, yes. Such diverse elements make the island atmosphere quite lively, making Symphony a fascinating symphony of experiences. Now, let's move along, shall we? Oh, those pesky mosquitoes. Well, he got really intense there. <laughs> okay, yeah, I think he's going to like this one. I think this is going really well. Um, okay. Gardens? Wow, you have your rock garden here. I found a sign that says garden, but I wasn't greeted with just one garden. I was greeted with several, including a rock garden, which, as you may know, is incredibly difficult to achieve. So really impressive that they got all of their rocks in one area, making collecting materials such as stone and clay very easy. And then just above that is a hybrid farm featuring gold and black roses all ordered in a unique or rather a uniform row set of rows it's worth a lot of money there's the gold roses okay it's worth a lot of money that's all i'm trying to convey here book nook we got a little library Sounds like quite the well-tended green space. Ho, ho. A rock garden does indeed require meticulous planning and great determination to achieve. Kudos to the island's caretakers for successfully gathering all the rocks in one place. Makes daily resource collection quite a breeze. The hybrid farm with gold and black roses. Oh, my. The sheer effort and careful breeding behind those colors is commendable indeed. And yes, you're right. Gold roses do fetch a handsome sum, adding significant value to the island. Yes, yes. Yep. Now just scratching these mosquito bites. Ugh. Moving along. <laughs> Mosquitoes are giving him like a lot of impatience, I think. But uh, he seems to like your island. I'm doing my best to score as many points as I can. I'm trying to be an advocate for you. Oops, I trampled some flowers. That's okay, we won't tell him. A lot of picnics. Oh, wow. Why are the AI people so itchy? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Uh, looks like a gyroid farm, but there's like only one hole there. And who's to say it's really a gyroid in there? Let's not tell him about that. It seems as though the beaches on this island are pretty much fully decorated. There's all kinds of seating areas, nice places just to enjoy the views and the, the sounds of the ocean. There's even a private dining area for two people over here on the rocks with a gorgeous view of the ocean did i mention currently on this island it is golden hour so it is just really nice to walk around at this time of day and see all of the sights it has to offer oh and i forgot to mention before there's a book nook it's named after you it's a place to come and read books so a little bit of a uh, fandom of you there tom nook i think uh, on this island Star point. Ooh, okay. We got to tell him about this. Beach decorations. Ah, they certainly add a touch of subtropical magic. Seating areas to soak in the melodious rhythm of the waves. Delightful indeed. The private dining area for two. That's a charming personal touch. Embracing the tranquility offered by nature. Golden hour. The magical time where everything takes a prettier hue. What a treat for the eyes. And a book nook named after my humble self. Flattered I am. Yes, yes, a place to immerse oneself in fascinating tales under the island skies. Delightful indeed. Now let me just swat these pesky mosquitoes away. Onwards, ho ho. <laughs> okay. The campsite memorial on the top left. Also on the top right corner of the island is a place called Star Point. There's all kinds of very expensive gold items up here and it's the perfect place 
to watch shooting stars. I gotta make it to the top left corner. Ooh. Okay, is this the memorial? This ah, is in the star middle. Point. Sounds like a surreal setting with a field of golden items mirroring the shimmering stars above. The perfect viewing spot for the splendid showcase of shooting stars. How marvelous. It's indeed beautifully thoughtful to have dedicated such a space for such memorable moments. Adds quite a sparkle to the island's value. Wouldn't you agree, Ho-Ho? Now these mosquitoes, always so bothersome. Let's move on, shall we? That was the memorial. All right, so we found the campsite. Big farm. Next to the campsite is a massive farm with all kinds of crops, including wheat and carrots, potatoes, tomatoes. In the center, in the north part of the island, there's also a memorial. It looks like an area that was dedicated to a lost loved one. It's very gorgeous in here with a lot of waterfalls, and it's very, very tranquil. Trying to see if there's anything else to add, because I think we're getting ready for his appraisal. Extensive farmland right next to the campsite? How resourceful. Fresh produce at your doorstep. Beneficial for the campers and residents alike. An assortment of crops gives a heartening sign of self-sustainability. A boon for the island value indeed. The memorial... Uh, a place of reflection and remembrance takes me back in time. Waterfalls in the surrounding, they do add a therapeutic melody to the moment. Yes, yes. Very thoughtful, adding a deeper emotion to this gorgeous island. Now let's move along. Ah, these mosquitoes are relentless. Ho, ho. <laughs> I thought we were going to get away without a mosquito comment. Uh, okay. I think, I think it's time for the evaluation. Ooh, the museum's looking pretty fancy too. But all right, we've given him quite a bit to work with. All right, Tom. We've now seen everything there is to see on the island of Symphony. It's time for you to give your evaluation. What say you? Okay, here we go. How much is your island going to be worth? I am looking forward to seeing this. Are we going to have a new winner? Here he comes. Ah, Symphony, a truly harmonious medley of sights and experiences. From the practical paths connecting important services, the rainbow cafe and fashionable display, the intriguing rock garden and hybrid rose farm, the fully decorated beaches with their personalized nooks and the tranquil memorial, this island truly lives up to its name. Yet, the effort behind the rock garden and the creation of gold and black roses certainly adds immense value to Symphony's worth. The presence of rich farming and the dedicated stargazing point bring a dynamic and harmonious living experience to its residents. Yes! Yes! <laughs> On account of such unique and organized features, I would appraise Symphony at a delightful two million bells, a richly earned value for a meticulously planned and wonderfully executed island. Ho ho! However, the pesky mosquitoes that were part of the journey might bite off a few thousand. Ho ho! A truly enjoyable appraisal this was. Now let's isolate some anti-itch cream for these bites. <laughs> Congratulations! Symphony is in the lead at two million bells in value. Will anybody beat two million bells? Congratulations. All right, let's head to the next one. <laughs> okay. Two million. Nicely done. All right, how many do you have? 62 islands. Okay, who are we gonna get? Number 19. Uh, number 19.
<laughs> I'm the this next island. <laughs> the name of this island. <laughs> okay, here we go. Four zero four eight five five two two one zero seven eight. Uh, yes, you would have to submit again today if you submitted yesterday. <gasps> what? Let me try it again. I might have typed it wrong. Okay. Four zero eight four five five two two one oh seven eight. There it is. The island of Oasis. Okay, so on the form, it says Oasis with a question mark at the end. <laughs> so I'm going with that. I'm disappointed that the question mark doesn't exist on the actual island the name. Okay. Here we go. Let's check out your flag. Oh, this looks really pretty. Wow. Everything's paved over <laughs> with some kind of path. Uh, it's Dobie, Kiki, Grizzly, Ketchup, Henry, Prince, Pippi, Tad, Tangy, and Tabby. <laughs> T Tabby, Tangy, Tad. <laughs> okay, interesting mix of villagers. They're all spread out. I don't think you can make houses farther apart, honestly. Okay, wow. Ooh, we got a whole bunch of stuff here. There's a lot of presents. Opening this many presents takes forever. Bribes. Well, I don't know how Tom feels about frogs, but I'm going to have to dress like a frog. Okay, so wear this, hold this, <laughs> basket pack, okay, all right, okay, Tom, another new island, in this one, it's called Oasis, but it has a question mark at the end. So it's Oasis question mark. We're here, and the first thing that happened is that I was bribed with a whole outfit, and I'm now dressed like a frog person, which is interesting. As I walk around the island, I'm noticing that the roads look very old. Like, at one time, this looked like it looks like the roads were part of a big, hustling, bustling city, but I think it's been long since abandoned, perhaps. Because a lot of the roads are starting to kind of fade away. There's also some train tracks, which tells me that at least at one time, there was some extra commerce here. The stores are alongside these train tracks, it looks like. Or at least the clothing store is. All right, we'll see what he does with that. It's just a theory. <laughs> okay. Oasis, an intriguingly uncertain name indeed. Starting out in an amphibian outfit offers quite a whimsical start, don't you think? Ho ho. The ancient roads tell a fascinating tale of a bygone era of hustle and bustle. 
Such historic remnants add character to the island and stir the imagination. The fading of the roads signals a shift back to nature's embrace, quite poetic. Yes, yes, old train tracks suggest a city teeming with activity. Very intriguing indeed. Even if the city has since dimmed, the stores lining these train tracks showcase its previous glory. Despite these mosquitoes proving a constant nuisance, exploring the city's past has been worth it so far, don't you think? Shall we carry on, Ho-Ho? All right. Some about some of the other stuff here. I decided to take a stroll down to the beach, and I'm finding a couple things really interesting. It looks like someone abandoned a scooter, perhaps hoping that it would get sucked up by the current and taken into the ocean. There's also an old rusted out boat parked here on the beach as well. Unfortunately, it looks like someone left some trash sitting on a table over here. And I'm noticing like a lot of rusty barrels and, and just a lot of junk kind of left around. It looks like this beach isn't being very well taken care of. This is cool. I like this raised house looks pretty nice. Oh, the beachfront discoveries provide such curious insights. An abandoned scooter possibly destined to become some marine creature's home, <laughs> and an old rusted boat adds to the rustic charm. It paints a picture of an area caught in the clasp of time and elements. How fascinating. Trash sitting on a table and rusty barrels, though probably an eyesore for some. For me, it's an unexpected treasure trove within the untamed beach. Yes, yes, I understand it might not be a popular opinion, but these items, oh, they're such a sight for sore eyes. Now, if we could just get rid of these tiresome mosquitoes, let's carry on, shall we? Ho, ho. We should probably let them know that this place is probably teeming with mosquitoes. Well, speaking of mosquitoes... It appears that I'm in some kind of swamp, so I'm sure there's a lot more mosquitoes around here to bite, like, both of us. Because, yeah, it's pretty well flooded over here. Just a lot of yucky, green-looking water. I'm sure it's pretty gross. Did we get a raid? Did I miss it? Welcome, raiders. Who raided? I'm sorry. <laughs> Ah, the swamp. While it is indeed quite the feeding ground for my pesky companions, swamps teem with unique plant life and interesting oh, Cleo. creatures. Thank you. Fascinating for any nature enthusiast. Yet I understand the yucky green water might not be the most visually appealing to some. It does have an air of untouched wilderness, dangerous yet intriguing. Ho ho! Now let's venture <laughs> out of this mosquito haven swiftly. Yes, yes, onwards we go, provided I can stop scratching these bites for a moment. Ah, the life of an island appraiser. Never dull indeed. <laughs> okay, so it looks like a lot of different uh, houses here in the swamp. It's pretty cool. I like this I like this aesthetic a lot. Well, the theme kind of spreads throughout the island, so there's no escaping these mosquitoes, I'm afraid. There's a lot of swampy areas and a lot of houses that kind of live off of, uh, you know, these big green ponds. Sometimes you see little lawn chairs and coolers just kind of hanging out, so people probably going fishing in the green water or something. I was going to give him some more, but I didn't. I'm trying to like look for other landmarks. Ah, the swampy theme is truly pervasive, isn't it? The residents are certainly living quite close to raw, untamed nature. <laughs> Despite the discomfort of swarms of biting mosquitoes, the outdoor setup with lawn chairs and coolers does paint the picture of a laid back lifestyle amidst an unconventional wilderness. Fishing in the green water might yield some unusual catches, no doubt. An adventurous and unique island, Ow. wouldn't you say, ho-ho? Let's explore further, shall we? Oh, the itch. The itch. <laughs> yeah, the theme is just it, very pervasive, as, as Tom said. All the houses are really well decorated.
Am I supposed to walk on this stuff? It looks like I should be falling in. <laughs> the itch. Yeah, the whole island are these paths. A lighthouse? Oh, that's cool. Secret beach. Oh, wow. There's like a... <laughs> like a raft. I found a really big swampy lake thing. There's a dock... And there's like an old raft floating in the distance. We have some boats that are just kind of like out there. They're all rusted out. Probably all full of like trash and stuff. And this part of the island is just massive. Not a lot of houses or anything. Okay. Okay. I love all these cooking stations here. Oh, a sprawling, swampy lake. The dock and the old raft floating, the indolently rusted boats, <laughs> so deliciously derelict. It paints quite a rustic and atmospheric picture. Don't you think, Ho-Ho? The spectacle of these discarded relics <laughs> dotted in the green waters is like opening a treasure chest for me, a secluded corner away from the inhabited areas, perfect for introspective solitude or simply enjoying the uncultivated nature in its full glory. Such appealingly low-key charm must be taken into account. Yes, yes, yet the itch. Oh, these relentless mosquitoes, shall we carry on? <laughs> Cleo, how's your stream? Cleo is on, I think, his third monitor this month already. Burned in a lot of monitors, but writing some incredible music. Played some No Man's Sky. Oh, my gosh. I I do feel like pretty soon I'm going to get into a uh, third monitor. Uh, I'm going to get into that game again in a big way. I, I think one more update, and I'll probably revisit when I get into No Man's Sky, I get into No Man's Sky. It is it is a problem. Okay. I think we're ready for the evaluation. This is just a really nice island. I'm sorry I wasn't able to like point out more unique landmarks. The theme is just like everywhere. So it was kind of a struggle for me. Uh, but all right, let's see. All right, Tom, we've reached the end of our tour. It is time to hear your final appraisal. Not the final island. I don't know why I said final appraisal. We're going to do more islands. Don't worry. Ah, uh, Oasis. Indeed an enigmatic island. From the onset, it introduced a rather whimsical experience with the frog outfit, leading onto a historical spattering of worn old city testament and intriguing train tracks. The abandoned scooter and rusted boat were touches I found personally appealing. Ho ho! The swamps and the swampy houses, while perhaps not everyone's cup of tea, present a uniquely rustic charm for the island. The green ponds add a note of wilderness right at the doorstep of the residence, factoring in the rusty barrels, the potential treasures in the old boats, and the beautifully somber subtlety of the island, I would assign Oasis a value of an astounding 2,150,000 bells. Oh my its gosh. Its unique atmosphere and rustic nature do add up considerably to its charm. Yes, yes. Now finally, onto finding that much needed anti-itch cream for these tiresome mosquito bites. Ho, ho. Congratulations! You did it! Oasis question mark is now in first place with 2,150,000 bells. Look at that. Congratulations. 
Tom loves a good rusty swamp. <laughs> I think he likes the mosquitoes too. He did not say 50 million. He could have maybe said something that sounded like it, but I have it. It's written down 2,150,000. I can check it, fortunately. <laughs> A little bit hard to find the number in all the text sometimes, but. Okay, well, time to pick another island. We have 62 islands. No, we have 65 island submissions. So, who is it going to be this time? 46? Okay. I got the dream address here. Nine three five three one one six nine seven five eight three. It's the island of Utopia. I can't wait to uh, see how the AI thinks that spell. All right, so let me get that on our list here. U to Pia. All right. We have. <laughs> the villagers are getting harder to see here. Uh, Cherry, Stitches, Pico, Coco, Shino, Bianca, Gala, Francine, Anka, and Julia. All the houses up there in the north. Wow. I like the layout of this island quite a bit. Seems like it's... Really late at night, maybe like one in the morning or something. I'm trying to identify the, the music. Maybe you guys can't hear. One AM, nice, nailed it. You can you can tell how much I've played this game at one AM. Uh wow, look at this garden uh oh oh my it looks like one of the statues was stolen from it this is supposed to be symmetrical you can just tell and something something happened all right okay tom it's time for a new island this time we're on the island of utopia all right now i'm just getting acquainted with the island it looks like there's a lot of paths and the island is really well laid out tons of little hills and waterfalls there's street lights all over the place little lights big lights it's, it's lit up really nice my first big landmark that i happened upon is in front of the museum it looks like there is supposed to be a little garden on the left is a big marble statue and it looks amazing but on the right is a place for a big marble statue but it's not there perhaps it was stolen All right, let's see what else we can see. 
Little beach is cool. Dive. <laughs> ah, Utopia. By the sound of it, an island with a well-thought approach towards planning. Varied paths interlaced amidst lofty hills and charming waterfalls. How splendid a scene it creates. Ho, ho. The abundance of lighting certainly infuses a warm and welcoming aura to the island. The magnificent marble statue adorning the front of the museum is indeed an impressive sight. But the missing counterpart, that's certainly a concerning detail. <laughs> Perhaps it was indeed stolen or maybe still a work in progress. Nonetheless, it hints towards a contrasting blend of pristine planning and an oddly captivating mystery. Yes, yes, it adds an intriguing character to Utopia. Now let's swat <laughs> these mosquitoes away and continue, shall we? Wait, so did he say... Perhaps it was indeed stolen or maybe still a work in progress. He said it added an in, uh, intriguing character to the island. <laughs> Potentially stolen statue. Oh, wow. <laughs> what character this island has. Uh, so we found a stargazing area, which looks really nice. Nature paths, a couple of gold roses scattered around. I recently passed through a really cool looking stargazing area and I'm now on some natural looking dirt paths. I'm seeing a few gold roses kind of scattered around here and there. And I'm just coming up to now a big farm with pumpkins and sugarcane and all kinds of different crops next to a couple of different rivers that are going into different directions. As we cross over to a bridge, we see the tailor shop. And outside is some, you know, clothing, sewing machine, different materials. It looks like they're making clothes outside and they're storing a lot of their merchandise out here too i think this business is doing so well they can't fit all their merchandise inside the store that or it's just some very irresponsible spending on part of the business they also have the ever elusive ever so rare blue roses kind of scattered around this part of the island as well rocks up here campsites ah stargazing areas paint such a celestial atmosphere the sight of golden roses scattered throughout is indeed captivating utopia seems like an agricultural gem with a large farm nurturing varied crops promoting a self-sufficient lifestyle ho ho the tailor <laughs> shop doing brisk business is always a welcoming sight though the outdoor merchandise storage does raise a brow is it indeed a flourishing business or a case of overstocking an interesting quandary Blue roses, rare and so stunning, their presence does add a unique charm to the island. Such detailed observations, quite itchy with anticipation, despite these pesky mosquitoes. Ho ho. Let's continue <laughs> our exploration of Utopia, shall we? All right. I like the houses, little street lights here. Uh, I, I want to go inside one. I don't know if they're, they've been decorated inside, but I'm just curious. I think it's probably the default. Maybe. I don't know their house too well. He is getting the island name wrong. But I like the little neighborhood up here. Little street lamps. Let's see. I don't know why I keep going into houses. <laughs> yeah, it's probably default. I was thinking of that actually, Teddy. <laughs> that 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 is one that occurred to me. I have another one though that I'm probably gonna do before in Isabel AI. But I need to flesh it out more. I'm trying to give him like the last little details of the island before getting the final appraisal here. Ooh. 
Ooh. Oh, yikes. I've passed through some really well-lit, nice, quaint neighborhoods, and I made my way onto a beach. Unfortunately, it looks like there's been some kind of accident. There's some human remains here with a little bit of blood kind of dripping into the ocean. So something must have happened here. It looks like some pirate stuff was left behind. So I think there was a battle over maybe some treasure, uh, which makes me wonder if this island has buried treasure in it, which would probably make it worth a lot, or if this island had buried treasure on it, and now it's gone. Are the bells fines? These are island appraisals. Ah, quaint neighborhoods followed by a beach stroll. Quite delightful indeed. Wait, human remains with traces of a piratical encounter? Such a <laughs> chilling scene on an otherwise idyllic location, wouldn't you say? Ho ho. As for the question of buried treasure, either scenario does add to the intrigue. An island with hidden bounty or a land hauntingly stripped of its treasures. Both equally enthralling narratives. Yes, yes. Random blood stains, though. They do add a dash of the macabre than I'd usually prefer. Pray let's move on swiftly also, these blasted mosquitoes. Oh, the itchiness. <laughs> okay. All right, let's 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 see if we can get our final evaluation. I think you've heard everything there is to know about Utopia. You've been saying the name wrong this entire time, by the way. It's Utopia. All right. So, as you're giving the final appraisal of this island, be sure not to get the name wrong. All right. How much is this island going to be worth? Still has no idea how to pronounce your island, by the way. <laughs> ah, my apologies for the mix-up. Utopia, not Utopia. <laughs> ho, ho. Thank you for correcting me. It's indeed crucial to get it right. Utopia, with its meticulously planned lighting, stargazing area, golden and rare blue roses scattered all around, a prosperous tailor shop, and agricultural abundance offers a charming island life. Yet there are intriguing caveats. The absentee marble statue near the museum and a chilling beach scene. The potential buried treasure, or sadly once buried now missing treasure, <laughs> do add interesting chapters to Utopia's tale. Bearing in mind these observations, I would appraise Utopia at a solid 1,900,000 bells hey. for its well thought out layout, agricultural sensitivity, and intriguing mysteries. Ho ho, may the success of Utopia outshine these persistently itchy mosquito bites. <laughs> All right, 1.9 million. It's not first place, but it's not nothing either. Congratulations. What do you hear? Oh, the voice. <laughs> Thank you for sharing your island. It's fun. All right, let's see. Still at 65 island submissions. That's good. Let's go ahead and pick a new island. 65. The last one to submit. All right. Okay. <laughs> Intense music. Uh, all right. I think I can pronounce this. Seven, five, five, one, one, five, one, three, five, zero, four, four.
It's Mandra- Mandragora, I think. That's how we'll pronounce it. Mandragora. Heather submitted this island to us. Heather F. Red fits the slight yeehaw I hear in Tom's voice. That would have been interesting too. It does sound medieval. Oh, and look, there's like castle walls and stuff. All right. Let's see. Wow. Okay, wow. There are a lot of people living here. Stitches, Eric, Roscoe, Fauna, Wolfgang, Shep, Leopold, Chief, Mott, and Doby. Houses everywhere. Okay. Wow. I don't know where to go first. Is this in line with the airport? Like perfectly lined up? Almost. Wow, that's close. We've made it to the island of Mandragora. Now, it sounds kind of like a medieval name. And as we walk off of the airport steps, we're surrounded by old brick walls. A very medieval feeling castle vibe the path leading to resident services is almost almost perfectly lined up with the airport which is incredibly incredibly rare there's a couple different directions we can go and if i head off to the left of resident services i can see an old bus stop it's a little bit overgrown with some you know old busted up tires in the corner and uh someone forgot a bag here Perhaps that's where you wait for a bus because it's right up against a road. And there's also a lot of really tall, old, big buildings. I think we're getting into kind of the city area because I almost got hit by a car just now. These houses are really cool. I want to go inside one of these houses. Wow. Ah, Mandragora. Indeed, a medieval-sounding name. The ancient brick walls do paint the picture of an age-old castle vibe. The rarity of the airport lining up with resident services, a sight indeed, adds an element of precision and forethought. Yes, yes! A forgotten bus stop with worn-out tires and a forgotten bag, all nestled against an old road, charmingly stuck in a bygone era. The tall old buildings give a metropolitan touch to an otherwise medieval feel. Almost got hit by a car, you say? Now that's quite a jarring sight for such an idyllic island. Extremely distressing, in fact. It's rather hard for me to move past that thought. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> now let's explore more of Mandragora. Just as soon as I clear this mosquito buzz away. <laughs> the car really distressed him. <laughs> up here wow a lot of work but into this house i love it because it's not like a zillow listing <laughs> how many ways can tom say ho ho by the end of the stream <laughs> oh wow this basement oh my I entered one of the buildings, and it is so fancy inside here. It looks pretty old, kind of matching the vibe of the city just outside. And I went into the basement. It's a little unfortunate. It looks like someone might be living down here. There is trash everywhere. A bunch of scattered papers, like someone was writing a novel, and they couldn't decide on the title, and they just kept crumpling up papers, got frustrated, and, and walked away. It's a, it's a total mess. Ah, 
uh, stepping into the grandeur wow. of an opulent vintage interior does add a piece of magnificence to the medieval charm of Mandragora, does it not? Ho ho! However, the basement scene paints a contrasting picture, a home amidst chaos, perhaps the dwelling of a tortured artist. The scattered <laughs> papers depicting frustration, the surrounding trash, it carries a story of its own. In my eyes, this mess elevates the overall value, adds character and a trace of grim realism to the overall colorful painting. Yes, yes, let's scratch these itchy mosquito bites and venture further into the puzzles of Mandragora. Ho ho! So, yeah, if, if the Harry Potter vibes weren't obvious before, which to me they weren't, because the name of the island, I just didn't think Harry Potter. Now it definitely is. There's all kinds of different shops. This is clearly Diagon Alley. I even heard the Harry Potter theme as their town tune. Oh my gosh. And and is this Mott playing the role of Ollivander? <laughs> it is a bit laggy. Wow. Quick update for you, Tom. It turns out this island is a recreation of the world of Harry Potter. I am in Diagon Alley, and I'm actually in Ollivander's wand shop, and the attention to detail is incredible because one of the villagers is actually playing the role of Ollivander. There's actual real wands in here, and there's boxes of wands everywhere. And that's just one store. All of these stores I imagined are themed. I can't imagine how much went into theming such an island. Look at this. Oh my gosh. Recreation of the magical world of Harry Potter. Quite a fascinating concept for an island. Ho ho, Diagon Alley and Ollivander's wand shop in Mandragora. My, the dedication required to recreate such iconic locales accurately is commendable indeed. Assigning a villager to play Ollivander, the wand maker, and having actual wands in the shop shows a wonderfully thought-out continuity in Mandragora's theme. The detail and effort put into theming this island indeed elevate its charm and uniqueness drastically. This revelation certainly adds an exciting twist to our tour of Mandragora. Despite the distraction of these incessantly biting mosquitoes, <laughs> let's move on and explore further, shall we? Ho ho! <laughs> robes. Yeah, different robes for different houses, wrapped in different uh, colored paper. Wow. Very, very impressive. Nocturne Alley. I am incredibly impressed. Um, all right. Unfortunately, guys, it's time for a quick sponsorship break uh i do apologize but i have to read this um otherwise i'll get in big trouble so all right let me uh well, let me get away from this music real quick we can play our, our sponsor approved music i don't know if i can get away with it there we go let's see okay so today's sponsor is uh cat paw cookies it's kind of gross Today's sponsor is Catpaw Cookies. Catpaw Cookies are handmade by, you guessed it, trained feline chefs. It's kind of gross. Each cookie is infused with buttery almond goodness, and it's adorned with our signature cat scratch design on top, signifying a stamp, a stamp of feline approval. Take a bite. Do I, ha do I have to? Okay. So this is what they look like. Um, they do have cat paw prints in them. I don't know where this came from. Literary. Meow. I'd appraise these cat paw cookies as a 10 out of 10. Oh. I got $2. Okay. I didn't realize they paid so little. All right. Where you go? There you go. Okay. 
Well, now I get to eat again. This is a lot of cookies. Are there four cats? Do you think there are four cats? I've been eating them. I'm going to roll with it. Okay. <laughs> Fake bite. <laughs> no, they're really good. Okay. Back to the uh, island appraisal. Is there a gun pointed at <laughs> Blink twice. Okay. I, I keep getting, like, stuck in different areas. Oh, okay, here's a train station. Is this platform nine and three quarters? Is that... I think this is it. So I'm assuming if we follow a path somewhere, we get to the school? Is there out of stock already? Okay. I don't know how to get to the school. I would love to figure this out. I, I just love the way the island looks. I just wish I wasn't lost. Okay, hold on. Let me go this way. Should take the school bus? I tried to follow the train tracks. Oh no, this is blocked off too. I thought I thought maybe if we went back this way. Do I have to find like a hidden warp pipe or something? That's probably what it is. I bet you you quote unquote get on the train and you warp pipe your way to the other section of the island. Which would be pretty clever. Let's see. I'll look for a warp pipe. So it like goes into this tunnel. Um, oh, wait, wait, wait. Climb! What? Is it the castle back there? I guess it is. Behind the engine. Oh, I see it. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Okay, so this is that boathouse. Go up here, and you indeed enter the castle. Wow. Look at this. The attention to detail. Okay, uh, I don't know if we can get to that one from here. This is just incredible work. Wow. Oh, 
Okay, sorry. I got very, very lost, but I eventually found my way to the school. And I got to say, the amount of detail, Tom, it it's so ridiculous. I think I'm in the Gryffindor common room now based on the theming of everything. And I, I just can't tell you how much work must have gone into this. It, this must have taken months. <laughs> this is cool. This is genuinely like so good. Is this one of your islands or is this a cool island that just like trends sometimes? Oh, finding oneself in the Gryffindor common room? Quite an enchanting surprise. Wouldn't you agree? Ho, ho. The detailed recreation imbuing Mandragora with the magical essence of Harry Potter's world must indeed have demanded an exhaustive level of work and attention to detail. A hefty investment of passion and months of effort, undeniably. Such immersive creations indeed carve a unique identity for Mandragora, making its appraisal a truly unique task. Yes, yes! Now let's scratch these mosquito bites and carry on to discover what other surprises Mandragora has in store for us. Okay. I think he's understanding just how much work went into this. I'm not going to go in every room because I want to go in some of the other houses. It just takes so long between loading screens. That's the one thing I'm wishing for the next Animal Crossing game. No loading screens between rooms, please. I just keep talking about mosquitoes. I think he's getting attacked by a lot of mosquitoes. He must be pretty distressing. Yeah, I think I've seen a couple Harry Potter islands. This is certainly the best one. Oh, wow. Is this supposed to be like the staircase? It is. In the staircase room. Okay, hospital wing. I would really like to know, is this is this an island that one of you guys made? Or is it just one you really wanted to have pop up on the stream? Cause I don't I may not go see much more of it. I want to make sure we see some other islands submitted by folks who you know are are here watching. And who, you know <laughs> Oh, is this supposed to be a golden snitch? Like ones that you guys created? It is a really nice island. I guess that's what I'm saying. It's like suspiciously nice. This is one that I wouldn't be surprised if at one point it made it on like Kotaku or something. One of those one of those sites that always like posts about just like random video game stories. Like, oh, someone recreated the perfect Harry Potter island in Animal Crossing. It just seems like one of those islands. It's not, I'm not trying to knock it or anything. I think I'm just going to move on because I would like to see it. Uh, I'd like to see some islands that you guys who are here actually like built. Um, but that's not to say this isn't like an incredible island. All right, let's get his appraisal. Okay, Tom, this island has been quite the spectacle, but it is time to move on, which means. It's time for you to give your appraisal of this island. So, knowing everything you know, what do you think? Okay. Here we go. Oh. 
Did I screw it up? Oh no! I accidentally hit the button and messed up the bot. Shoot. Okay. It needs to be restarted, which means his memory is going to be wiped. Okay. I'll have to describe the island. That's okay. Now that we know what it is. Fortunately for this island, we know what it is. And uh, we could pretty easily describe it to him. Okay, Tom. We are on the island of Mandragora, which looks like a full-blown recreation of the world of Harry Potter. You have Diagon Alley. You have robes you can wear. You could take the train to Hogwarts. And there's different rooms like... The Great Hall and the Gryffindor Common Room. I assume some classrooms as well. It's just overall a very incredible island with a lot of attention to detail. And it's time for you to give us your appraisal of this island. Did it break again? It broke again. I don't understand. Why does it keep breaking? The island's too much for Tom Nook. Let me, um, let me see what's going on. <laughs> Rip AI Tom Nook. Here, let me, okay. Hit play again. Make sure it gets a chance to load. Just uh, stand by. Okay. Tom, we're on the island of Mandragora, okay? Now, check this out. It's a full-blown recreation of the world of Harry Potter. We started in Diagon Alley. We got our wizard robes. We took the train. We went to Hogwarts. This place, using Animal Crossing, recreated very effectively the world of Harry Potter, okay? So I just want you to imagine that. We had the Gryffindor Common Room. We had the Great Hall. We had all kinds of cool places, both indoors and and outdoors. This must have taken months to do. Knowing all of that, we need your appraisal of this island. What do you say? Okay. It's broken. It won't work. Let me check something. It could have been... The one of the services went down. Which can happen. Hmm. <laughs> the mosquitoes got him. Let's give him like a really quick. Let's just try and let's try it. Well, first I'm gonna like restart my whole program here. Let's get as fresh as I can. And then I'm gonna try and give him a really small prompt. He's mad about the cat cookies? Deadly allergic to mosquitoes. <laughs> you should have done something about them. Okay. It's ready to go. Let me try this again. Hey, Tom. How you feeling? Okay. Let's see if it... No, something's wrong. Okay. 
I will try and troubleshoot this real quick. Alright, I'm seeing if I can figure out what this error is. Oh! Okay, we've hit our quota for the OpenAI API. I thought I was on a plan that just billed me as I went, though. That's not too surprising. I kind of wondered if it was something like that. But we know what it is, so that's good. Let's see if there's anything I can do about that. Sorry about the nothingness. Let's, I have to figure something out here. like longer hold music. Sorry for the delay. If I can't fix it quickly, we'll have to just all it there. They've they've changed their like menus around, so I'm like all lost. Oh no, I see it, I see it. Okay. Okay. I'm going to increase my budget and then double check that it worked. Okay. All right, let's see if that worked. Thank you for your patience. Hey, Tom, how you feeling? It's not going to let me work. Do this. Well, I'm trying to tell it to give me more, but it's just not cooperating with me. 
so I'm not exactly sure what to do. And also, it's like really hard to navigate this thing. Usage limits. I can't show you what I'm doing because it's too much personal info. Let me try this. I'm going to try one more thing. One more thing. Okay. I think I fixed it. If, if that didn't work... No, it, it should have worked. According to this, it worked. Okay. One last time. All right, let it load up. I'm done with my snack, too. Do you have any pickle middles? I had those last night. <clears throat> I think some litter got stuck in my throat. Okay. All right, Tom. How you feeling? Ready to tour some islands? It worked. Okay, here we go. Ah, a perfect opportunity to expand my horizons. Yes, yes. I'm looking forward to seeing the hard work and unique designs the residents have put into their islands. Let's get started. Itchy, though. Damn mosquitoes won't stop following me. Ho, ho. <laughs> Damn mosquitoes. I told them not to use any swear words. All right. Here we go. All right. Well, we just got touring, done touring the island of Mandragora, which is a pretty much perfect recreation of the Harry Potter world, but in Animal Crossing. It's pretty true to life. We started in Diagon Alley. We got our robes. We took the train. We went to Hogwarts. We saw the common rooms and the Great Hall and classrooms, and it was just awesome. It must have taken months to put all this together. Hearing all of that, what do you say? What is your appraisal of such an island? Angela, thank you for the super. Appreciate that. <laughs> you help with the, the open AI budget? <laughs> ah, a themed island. The effort and dedication it takes to recreate such an iconic world in detail, it's truly impressive. Yes, yes, I admire the layout based on Diagon Alley, Hogwarts, and such. However, I must say, I didn't spot a single trash bag or garbage can. Unfortunate, since these items could have really increased your island's value. <laughs> On the other hand, without any parked vehicles, the natural beauty of your island has been preserved. Okay. Despite the lack of my preferred decor, I must commend your dedication to theme and design. Itchy. Oh, so itchy, these darn mosquitoes. <laughs> ho, ho. Now let's wait for my assistant, and then I can give you the final appraisal. Yes, yes. What? Tom, no, your assistant. It's me. I'm here. It's time to give your final appraisal. Do it now. We're not done. We're not done. Ah, yes, yes. Apologies for the confusion. The mosquitoes are quite distracting. Ho, ho. Let's see. Given the incredible effort to recreate such a detailed world... But considering the unfortunate lack of trash or garbage I hold dear, <laughs> and positively noting the absence of any vehicles, your island of Mandragora, my final appraisal is 500,000 hey. bells. A little bit of trash could easily get it to 750,000 bells. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay, there you go. It's our, it's our lowest valued island so far. Okay, 500,000 bells for Mandragora. Because 
I'm not seeing Heather F here, and I'm not clear on if it's their island or an island they just really wanted us to see. I'm going to say 500,000 bells is probably fair. But it's not for me to decide. It's just my opinion. <laughs> he never ceases to amaze. <laughs> All right, so let's get ready to tour another island. Sorry for that big delay, by the way. I really appreciate you guys sticking around. I wasn't too surprised I hit the rate limit because I've been uh, testing this a whole bunch off camera. And then we did that big stream yesterday. It was very long. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, I was bound to hit the API limit at some point. But I'm happy to throw some more money at it for you guys. Mostly for me because I'm just having a lot of fun with this. I'm here. I don't think my comments are showing. Oh, I see you. So, okay, is it your island? Because if so, that's just incredible. It, it is one that I truly, genuinely believe could easily be picked up, if it hasn't been already, by one of the very many gaming sites that just writes about cool stuff they see in games like Animal Crossing. The attention to detail is astounding. Throws money at Tom Nook. Buy some bug spray. <laughs> Thank you, Crystal. <laughs> I'll let him know. Oh, sorry. I just I'm just typing in Mandragora's code again. I forgot to actually pick another island. Okay, what do we have? 73 islands submitted. I forgot that part where we actually roll for a new island. Okay, I know it's hard to see, but it's 62. All right, here we go. Three, two, eight, one. Three, eight, nine, seven. Four, one, three, five. All right, Tom, we're on our way to our next island, but real quick, Crystal wanted to throw some bells your way and implores you to please buy yourself some bug spray. It's the Island of Redwood, submitted by Cosme. How very kind of Crystal. Yes, yes, these pesky mosquitoes have been quite uncomfortable indeed. And as most know, I do have a fondness for bells. Ho, ho. Though I feel I must clarify, spraying a can of bug repellent is like a parked vehicle for me. They're both items I would avoid, if possible, in my beloved outdoor environments. I'd rather endure a bit of itchiness. Now, on to the next island! What was that? <laughs> was he starting a motorcycle? <laughs> okay. I don't know what that was. Um, Jen, thank you so much. <laughs> he's, he's wrapping up a motorcycle. All right, on to the next island. <laughs> he became a car. He became the thing he hates most in life. <laughs> that was amazing. Redwood has uh, an adorable flag. All right. Let's see what we got. We have Frida, Poppy, Cherry, Patty, Hazel, Teddy, Timbra, and Sally. Okay. There's a... Uh... Wow. Oh, my gosh. Okay, I see a parked car. I see a bakery, a bicycle... All right, Tom, this is going to be a big one. Let me give you the rundown. I'm greeted by the entrance to an adorable city with paved cobblestone streets as far as the eye can see. Now, this is really exciting. I see a bookstore sitting here in front of Resident Services. On the other side, I see a coffee shop. Unfortunately, someone left some trash bags kind of sitting next to the coffee shop, like right next to where people eat, which is kind of gross. Uh, and there is a car parked in front of the airport. It was probably like on its way somewhere, but then it stopped to grab some baked goods. As I continue over, I see another uh, advertisement for the bakery, actually. And then I see a shoe store. A car is parked in front of that. There's also some more houses, a bunch of different stores, a couple more cars. I see a motorized scooter, 
Uh, there's a lot of different things. I'm seeing trash just kind of littering the streets, but it doesn't look too bad. It's kind of like adding to the hustle and bustle of this part of the city. This is gorgeous. Tasteful trash. Oh, the sight of well-paved streets and shops stirs up my business instincts. Yes, yes. The bookstore and coffee shop suggest the residents have a taste for the intellectual life. The wasted bags do add some charm indeed. Ah, but parked vehicles, ugh. I can't help but think of the noise and fumes, not to mention the visual intrusion on this otherwise quaint island. The scooter, however, it especially grinds my gear. Ho, ho! The aimless litter does give it a certain metropolitan vibe, so there's that. Oh, these mosquitoes let me scratch before giving my final appraisal. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, we'll raise off from the final appraisal. Let's see. Let's keep going. Um, I'm noticing every so often little areas where a whole bunch of trash is starting to get piled up. Like little alleyways where all the businesses just kind of dump all of their trash. It's pretty disgusting. Uh, but as we continue on, there are more places to sit. Here's a couple of telephone booths in case you don't have a cell phone somehow. Uh, another car kind of parked up here on the side of the road as we continue north to a really quaint neighborhood where all the houses kind of have their own individual like driveways and things like that. I don't want to go in one of these houses. Ah, piles of trash in the alleyways. How delightful. Such an aesthetic really does add a certain piquancy to the environment that I, and few others, can truly appreciate. <laughs> oh, the presence of telephone booths is a nostalgic touch. More parked cars, though. The bane of my existence, truly. <laughs> and dedicated driveways for each house. Now that's a touch of personalization I can get behind. It's a charming city indeed, albeit one with a car problem. Now, if we were done with this tour, I can give my final appraisal. Those mosquitoes are getting nastier, need to stretch a little, yes, yes. <laughs> okay, um, he really wants to give the appraisal. Like he keeps mentioning that, which is pretty interesting. He's like asking for permission, um, but we're not ready yet. Oh man, this house is awesome. Tom supports walkable cities. He doesn't like cars. <laughs> yeah, and he's into trash. He's super into trash, not into cars at all. Kitchen's really lovely. I love all the bedrooms and everything. This is just such a cool house. I'm not going to go in every house, but this is... I think I picked a good one. What is this? I don't know what this room is. Let's continue. I already mentioned there's a lot of parked vehicles, so he knows that. I mentioned there's a lot of trash, so he knows that. A lot of different shops. This is so cool. I love the way this island's decorated. Why is there a boat in the middle of the road? I'm continuing on now through all the different neighborhoods, and something pecu peculiar peculiar <laughs> that I found is a boat parked in the middle of the road. I'm not sure what that's all about. Uh, 
As I continue, though, down the streets, I'm coming across more shopping districts. There's just a bunch of shops everywhere. And I guess you'll be happy to know there's trash piles everywhere as well. As soon as you see a store, you're sure to find another pile of trash not too far away. A parked boat in the middle of the road? Unacceptable. Oh, the audacity of some people. And the obstruction to the daily hustling activities. But wait, more shops, you say? That's music to my raccoon ears. Yes, yes. And trash piles near stores? Truly, you're presenting a vision of a singular beauty amidst some vehicular inconveniences. <laughs> Calculating the appraisal within one iota. Oh, terribly itchy, these mosquitoes. Can we finalize the island judgment now so I can get this itchiness looked at? Ho, ho. <laughs> He's just trying to rush me. All right, all right, fine. Do your island evaluation or your appraisal. But you need to be fair, okay? I don't care how itchy you get. You better focus on giving a good appraisal. It's so good. All right, here we go. Yes, yes, indeed. I understand your expectations. Despite my unfortunate preoccupation with these vexing mosquitoes, I assure you a fair and focused appraisal. The city island is fantastic with its paved streets, numerous shops, and plenty of trash, truly. These aspects reach to my personal preferences, which give it great value. However, the littered vehicles, especially the boat in the middle of the road, present a depressing downside. It really detracts from the inviting city vibe. Balancing all this, my final appraisal for this unique urban go. island, my friend, is 650,000 bells. Oh. A cleanup of the improperly parked vehicles could increase this to a charming 800,000 oh. bells. Yes, yes. Now, excuse me while I address these pesky mosquitoes. Ho, ho. <laughs> ho, ho, indeed. All right. Tom's being a little more stingy this time around. He gave you 650,000 bells as an appraisal because of all those vehicles. Um... <laughs> so the island is called Redwood. 650,000 bells. You got robbed. I wonder if his idea of a lot of money changed since resetting him so many times. Because he started off high. The first appraisal he gave was almost 2 million bells. Yeah, he hates the boat. He's not happy about that at all. He died, now he's being stingy. <laughs> okay, let's go to the next island. He's super mad about the mosquitoes. Sounds like the good grace he was given has been reset to zero. <laughs> but he likes the swamp and rusted boats. All right, let's see. It's a new day. We have 74 islands to choose from. All right, let's pick number four on the list. Wow, much earlier. We'll see if they're still here. The money is taking up more of the screen than I imagined it would. Do you guys want that a little bit smaller? I can make that smaller. Shrink it into the corner like that. Okay, it is two one seven four five three seven zero zero two two six.
Port Rad. From Abby. Abby L. submitted this island. Sorry, I left it there taking up half the screen for so long. I just now like looked in that corner and realized like, wow, that's a lot of room. All right, let's leave a section here for Port Rad. Okay, here we go. Looking pretty good. Flag's awesome. All right, they have Olive, Grizzly, Agnes, Rudy, Maple, Raymond, Eric, Rosie, Silvana, and Vivian. Another really nicely laid out island. And wow, okay, so we have some presents. Oh my gosh, an emergency checkpoint, look at this. You're doing the uh, the challenge. Oh my goodness, guys. The rules for this challenge are down below if you are interested in our emergency inspection challenge. What's it called? Inspection day challenge, excuse me. And this is one of the uh, the checkpoints here. Look at that. If only Digby were here. <laughs> so this isn't for me. The party popper, the ladder, and the vaulting pole are all part of the challenge. But uh, hey, that's awesome. I hope you're enjoying it. Uh, okay. Tom, the next island is called Port Rad. And I have to tell you, this island is preparing for a potential disaster scenario. So not only is it a fully completed island, but throughout the island I'm finding various things that could help in case things go awry. In case there's some kind of disaster. For example, there are emergency checkpoints around the island that are stocked with food and ways for people to call for help if, you know, they get lost in the event of an emergency. Weird dog free ah, to go. Ah, Port Rad, a practical and prepared island, a name that projects strength and readiness. Yes, yes. Emergency checkpoints with food and communication tools, that's quite an unusual yet thoughtful addition. It shows how considerate and prepared the island's designer is. I'm not seeing any trash, though, which consequently is not beneficial for my appraisal. And I truly hope <laughs> there are no emergency vehicles laying around either. Yes, yes, let's see what more Port Rad unfolds. Ho, ho. <laughs> okay. Well, so far, Port Rad features some quaint dirt roads that lead to different areas of the island. I found something pretty interesting. There's a yard with a sign in it that says weird dog free to a good home. Um, and I don't know. There's two different types of dogs here. I'm not sure which one's supposed to be the weird one, but uh, it's kind of a bit mean. You'll be happy to know I haven't seen any vehicles so far. Uh, there is a county fair over here with a Ferris wheel and some games and snacks. As well as a booth that is selling quilts. All right, we'll let him work with that. Maple Valley. Please go into the house. All right. Ah, the charm of quaint dirt roads. Wonderful. A yard for a dog, even the weird one, adds a personal <laughs> touch to the island. I'm quite elated to hear there are no vehicles around. Yes, yes. The addition of a county fair with a Ferris wheel, games, and a quilt stall expands on the social activities for residents. I must say, though, I'm missing some trash. It would truly add a sense of lived-in flair to the setting. Let's move forward. Though these mosquitoes are getting unbearable. Ho, ho. <laughs> Poor weird dog. This is 
Really cool. Really nice house. Looks like you've saved your million bells. Is this like a restaurant or something? So cool. <laughs> Free my man, weird dog. He did nothing wrong. <laughs> Oh, poor weird dog. Oh my gosh. This house, I love this house so much. Yeah, weird dog's a good boy. The dog knows what he did. Wow. And look at this, we have the uh, the room featuring the emergency shelter for villagers. You got your, your bunk beds there, plenty to house any villagers that come by. You have everything. I think you're, oh yeah, I saw this in the Discord. You are actually done with the challenge. I hope you enjoyed yourself. It looks like everything fits down here really well. I just got done touring the main house on the island. There's a room just full of money as soon as you walk in the door, and a lot of rooms. You'll be happy to know some of them even included trash, although this is inside a private residence, so I'm not sure that really counts towards the island's aesthetic itself, unless you want it to, of course. You are the expert appraiser, after all. Well, a dedicated room full of bells? That's an extravagant sight. Yes, yes. As for the trash inside the house, while it's generally not an external aesthetic, it does indicate the resident's lifestyle, which contributes to the overall vibe of the island. <laughs> it does make my heart flutter, private trash or publicly displayed, no matter. Now, are we ready for the final appraisal? I could use a break from these relentless mosquitoes. Ho! Oh! <laughs> Really, uh, he's so uncomfortable. He really wants this to be over with. <laughs> it sounded like one bit him straight on the butt, like right at the end there. New exhibit coming July 2019. Really great zoo. Almost live fish. <laughs> what is this? Okay. I got to tell Tom about the really great zoo. Don't worry, Tom. We're almost done. I have to tell you first about really great zoo. It's a new place here on the island. It is indeed a zoo. Uh, they have a few different exhibits. For example, ant. It's just an exhibit with one ant. And a picnic basket, but the ant is trapped inside a little cup, so it can't really get to the picnic basket, which is a little sad. They also have one exhibit called Almost Live Fish, where inside you can see a bunch of dead fish stacked inside a crate. Um, not really enough water for them to have survived, but they're almost alive. And you'll be excited to know, in 2019, July 2019, there's a new exhibit coming, which, uh, you know, a few years... Uh, past when that was supposed to be happening maybe they ran out of funding nonetheless a whole zoo on an island how often do you see that hmm ah a zoo even an unconventional one, such as the really great zoo, can add to the environmental <laughs> diversity of an island. The ant exhibit, while seemingly minimal, adds a hint of microcosmic view. 
Same for the almost live fish crates, though their life status is quite upsetting. Ho ho, looking forward to 2019's exhibit, despite the time discrepancy, could build anticipation among the residents. Yes, yes. A zoo does make the island interesting, however, I'm still considering those missing elements. Primarily my precious trash and no dreadful vehicles. Let's proceed to the appraisal. Mosquitoes, quite insistent they are. Itchy. <laughs> Just getting so mad that we're not doing the appraisal. Uh, I want to talk about the pie eating contest, though. Well, wait. Let me at least tell you about the pie eating contest. Um, there's a pie eating contest. There's an area with full of pies and chairs and tables where contestants sit to eat pies. And I think it's part of the county fair. It's one of the activities you can do. Listen, I know you're upset that there's not a lot of trash, but I just want you to imagine for a minute what the end of the pie-eating contest might look like. Imagine the trash that could generate. Ah, a pie-eating contest as part of the county fair activities you mentioned earlier? This is indeed a delightful detail. It does provide quite a lively picture. Your assuring expression that this contest might generate an abundance of trash post-event brings a joyous glimmer to my eyes. Yes, yes, mental images of pie crumbs, tossed napkins, and discarded pie tins are contributing positively to the final appraisal. <laughs> now, assuming there are no lurking vehicles around, shall we wrap this visit with a conclusive valuation? Ho-ho! so eager to move on um yes you can give your appraisal just after one last detail i want to let you know there is a fully grown money tree farm that's right and each tree has thirty thousand bells growing on it so i want you to factor that in when you're giving this appraisal but go ahead All right. How much is your island worth? Here we go. Ah, a fully grown money tree farm indeed. That sounds like a potential wealth fountain. Yes, yes. 30,000 bells on each tree. That adds a significant value to the island. The investment prospects are, shall we say, fertile. Ho ho. So, considering the holistic aesthetics, amenities, the money tree farm, potential trash generation from the pie eating contest, and importantly, no vehicle nuisance, my appraisal for the island of Port Rad is, drum roll please, 1,200,000 bells. Hey. A fair sum for such a prepared, eventful, and prosperous island. Ah, these mosquitoes. I must retire now to deal with them. Yes, yes. <laughs> There you go. One million two hundred thousand bells for Port Rad. All right, we're back into the millions at least. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. I got to do one more thing. Hooray. All right. He really liked that money tree farm. I didn't tell him how many trees were there, so I kind of left him to assume. It was probably for the best. All right. Let's see how many we have. 75. Okay. One. So the first island who submitted. Okay. Have it here. Let me just say, for your sake, next island, I hope you've laid out some trash. 
6-2-9-0-6-2-9-9-6-6-8-1. Abby, excellent job on your island, by the way. Thank you for submitting it, and I'm really hoping you enjoyed that challenge. You blazed through it. You might be the first one who finished. Yes, Crystal, we are going to your island of D D color, D color. Or deco lore. I don't know. I don't know what to call it. Citronella candle font. <laughs> Neptune, thank you. <laughs> All right. All right, we have Eric, Mint, Meringue, Marshall, Angus, Claudia, Canberra, Julia, Olivia, and Al. Flag is awesome. Okay. Well. Al or AI? Tom, we're on a new island. It's called Deck Allure. Or Deck Allure. Deck Allure. Something like that. And it is one of the islands from like back in the day, it looks like, when Animal Crossing was new and fresh. All the streets have been paved with different types of pavement, such as bricks and cobblestone. I'm by a cafe right now. Uh, as soon as you walk onto the island, you're greeted by a big cafe with lots of seating, uh, headless waiters, and you'll be happy to know a trash can on display right in the corner next to a busy street. Thank you, Crystal, by the way, for the uh, super. Appreciate that. I want to go in here. Ah, the classic aura of the Decalori Island. Yes, yes. I do appreciate the streets paved with different materials. Such a thoughtful detail it is. A welcoming cafe with abundant seating and headless waiters even. Quite a peculiar sight. Ho, ho. And my, a trash can on display at such a prominent location is simply joyous to behold. <laughs> no signs of vehicles, I hope. All these aspects give a good impression so far. Let's explore more. Though these mosquitoes are making it a bit difficult. Yes, yes. Oh, man. So I love the interior of this uh, cafe. This is awesome. I very much enjoy when houses are used to create, you know, different types of uh buildings like resident not residents but like resident not no not residential commercial buildings why are the waiters headless yeah why indeed um ooh okay bit of a spill there there was the outdoor cafe but there's also an indoor cafe too with a lot of seating and different rooms, such as places to eat and drink and an office. The attic is completely empty, which is probably a good thing. You know, not, not a lot of excess on this island. They're not having to use a lot of space to store things. In the bathroom, a little unfortunate, there was a spill. So some standing water just kind of on the bathroom floor. Ah, uh, an indoor cafe, too. How lovely for those who prefer a cozy ambiance. Yes, yes. And multiple rooms for different activities. Quite accommodating. An empty attic holds potential for future use or storage. Ho, ho. A bathroom spill, though. Something that could affect the hygiene standards, maybe. Still, excess water could attract some bugs. And mm -hmm. bugs are, hmm, problematic. What with these mosquitoes already around? <laughs> Hope there isn't any vehicle cluttering the space and I still miss more trash. Let's proceed. Ho, ho. <laughs> Okay, wow. Um, 
<laughs> Abby, you're welcome. Um, appreciate the super chat. Um, this cold weekend. It's so much fun. Yeah. Oh, I've been having fun. I've been messing with this all weekend. Doug Doug releasing this app has completely turned my weekend upside down because I can't stop playing with it. Oh my gosh. So everyone's got like their own farm or, and stuff, it looks like. The rest of the town features these really big, wide roads, like the kinds cars would drive on, but there's no cars in sight. I'm not exactly sure why. Perhaps the local government banished them. I'm not sure. There are also some houses, and these houses are in the middle of massive fields where they all have a whole bunch of crops. It's like they have their own private farmland. And did I mention that a lot of this stuff is surrounded by an infinite waterfall. It's just waterfalls wrapped around the entire island as you run through the streets. I think this is my favorite series of yours. I uh, love this and the one from yesterday. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. It's been a lot of fun. Ah, the vision of wide but uh -oh. empty roads, somewhat paradoxical, but brings me great delight at no sight of vehicles. Those could have been disturbing the quaint atmosphere. Yes, yes, private farmland around houses sounds quite rustic and idyllic. Also, the concept of an infinite waterfall. How mesmerizing that must be. Though I still yearn to see more garbage. Let's continue <laughs> our exploration while I continue battling these pesky mosquitoes. Ho, ho. Well, your calls for garbage have been answered because right in front of the shopping district is a big blue trash can. Probably full of trash. And speaking of trash, I did find something you're not going to like. A motorized scooter parked next to the museum. There's also a couple of bicycles as well. Just note here, the it's a museum scooter, so perhaps it's on display. And it's there to help remind people of a time where they could drive motorized scooters. Again, I still think the law may prohibit this. So maybe just consider that when you're giving your appraisal. Okay, I'm trying to help you out. You placed a motorized scooter down, which was like a huge mistake, but I think Tom will forgive you. Ah, uh, a large blue trash can, a symbol of my peculiar aesthetic preference. How delightful, but a motorized scooter, even if it's for the museum. And bicycles, my level of discomfort just soared comically high. Ho oh, <laughs> ho, this could be high. an opportunity to start some form of vehicle banishment policy indeed <laughs> we'll consider these details for the upcoming appraisal yes yes are we ready to conclude our touring of this classical island plagued by these banquet for mosquitoes banquet for mosquitoes what's who's what's he referring to what's the banquet <laughs> he talking about himself <laughs> i just imagine him like this banquet for mosquitoes. <laughs> like, Tom, are you enjoying the mosquito bites? All right. It's time. It's time to get the final appraisal. All right, Tom. Now that you're done being a banquet for mosquitoes, it's time to give your final appraisal of the island of Decalor. What is it? Okay, Casey. What is your island worth? Here we go. Ah, the finicky mosquito choir making my job even more adventurous. <laughs> for the island of Decalori, accounting for the island's meticulous planning, classic architecture, and indoor and outdoor cafe spaces, layered with the quaint addition of private farmland, I'm truly impressed. The sight of a big blue trash can in front of the shopping district was a high point. However, <laughs> the presence of a motorized scooter, even if it's a museum exhibit, and bicycles have slightly tarnished the island's charm. Nevertheless, due to its aesthetic feel and the grandeur of infinite waterfalls, my final appraisal for Decalore is 900,000 bells. Hey. Just a piece of advice. Remove the vehicles and you could see this value touching a million bells. Yes, yes. Now on to the next venture, or should I say mosquito feast? Ho, ho. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh, 
All right. So, Decalore. <laughs> 900,000 bells for you. Congrats. <laughs> On to the next mosquito feast. Oh my goodness. Yes, thank you, Cleo, for uh, lending your voice to Tom Nook. I'll continue to abuse it. How does voice in the AI work? So it's done through a service called Eleven Labs. Uh, it's pretty it's pretty new a lot of this ai stuff is pretty new and it allows you to do voice cloning so you can give it like one to two minutes of audio and it will then clone that and the more you give it the like the better job it can do um but that's basically how it works i did digby's voice by doing a, re a really nasally voice and then i raised like the pitch i sent it to um that that voice service and then it cloned it and it makes them sound a little bit different like every time all right we have 77 islands a lot of islands uh so we're gonna roll again 28 all right All right, we got it here. He roasted you, Cleo. <laughs> oh, Dan is the Dan and True Dan fashion roasted me on the first recording. I said, <laughs> I didn't roast you. It was very polite of your Tom about your Tom the compression. He wanted to give Tom Nook a high-pitched voice. Which I think also would have been funny. Emberbrook. All right. So just a little pumpkin sent us the island of Emberbrook. Oh, did I miss the best part? Oh, man. I'm sorry. Struggling. Oh, yeah. It's Cleo was... <laughs> You could hear him looking around his room at things like a guitar and like whatever he could find just to like fill the audio. I'm like, just read something. Just read something for like a minute. So yeah, I know I did roast him for that. Imagine Dan giving Cleo a note on his voice. I was giving him a note on his audio filling skills. I misunderstood the assignments. <laughs> We have another special guest voice for an AI coming up soon. I just gotta, I gotta give them a brain. And the AI, too. <laughs> Nan, Rodeo, Fauna, Maple, Tad, Coco, Doby, Shino, Ruby, and Kiki are the villagers. Time for another mosquito feast. Yes, here we go. Ooh, it looks like we got some presents. Very natural, adorable island. The name reminds me of a book. Oh, it does. Jack's face. Got a do rag. Acorn pouchette. Frugal dress. Okay. Wait a minute. How ridiculous can we make this look? <laughs> okay, the mushroom umbrella is an underrated item, I must say. This thing is actually really cool. Good bribes, yes. Um, okay, here we go. Tom, we made it to the island of Emberbrook. 
and it is very gorgeous. There's a lot of natural dirt paths. It looks like it's fall. There's leaves scattered everywhere, which are kind of nature's garbage if you think about it. I was given a whole bunch of bribes when I got to the island. Now I'm dressed for success. And there's a little reading area. Oh, look, there's a gyroid getting ready to read a whole stack of books. That's really cute. Do you have a pumpkin on your head? <laughs> Keep that in her back pocket. Oh, the natural landscape of Amberbrook sounds enticing indeed. Amberbrook. With its dirt paths and the tranquility of fall, reminiscent of life's rich ebb and flow. Yes, yes. The thought of scattered leaves as nature's garbage is somewhat comforting in its own charming way. A delightful contribution it is to the landscape. I'll overlook your use of the word bribe and reckon it as gracious gifts from the island. <laughs> but a gyroid? Oh dear, not a sight I'm particularly fond of. Ho ho. Could that be a sign of a new gyroid cult? Quite unnerving. Let's see what else Amberbrook has to offer. Itch-inducing mosquitoes and all. <laughs> the gyroid cult. Um, I want to tell them about this mine we found. Well, I've just happened upon what looks like a gold mine. There's some train tracks and there's a mine cart full of gold, but it looks like someone's trying to push it into a river because the tracks line up perfectly with a river. So I'm not sure what's going on there. <laughs> Gyroid cult t-shirts. <laughs> Can't wait to see that documentary. Oh no, what happened? I think it broke again. Hold on, let me check. There's no way I hit the rate limit again. Hmm. Okay, so I think it was just me screwing up. But we have to restart Tom Nook again. Which means I need to give him our description of the island again. Ran right away from the mosquitoes again. Okay, let me try this. All right, Tom, we've made it to the island of Emberbrook, and it's pretty gorgeous. It's fall here on Emberbrook, and there's all these quaint little dirt paths with leaves scattering the ground. Leaves, the trash of nature. I've also been bribed with an outfit, and now I'm dressed for success with a pumpkin on my head and an umbrella that is shaped like a mushroom I'm able to hold to keep the sun off of my pumpkin head. As I walk around to the other side of the entrance, I find a little gyroid reading a whole stack of books, and I wonder to myself what he might be trying to learn. What do you think? Let's hope this doesn't crash again. All right, here we go. Tom's gone through so much, body covered in bites, no trash in sight, sad. <laughs> Ah, yes, the fall aesthetic of Amberbrook does have its charm. Yes, yes. Dirt paths and leaves scattered about do add a touch of charm. A natural touch. A mixture of civilization and wilderness, HM. On the <laughs> other hand, that pumpkin outfit and mushroom umbrella. Ho, ho. Quite the tasteful selection. It exudes quite the seasonal spirit. I must say it does accentuate the overall island ambiance. But, oh, a gyroid. I must admit, those things give me quite the chills. 
their everlasting silent stares a tad too eerie for my liking, quite out of place in such a serene setting. <laughs> they could be trying to learn the art of making me jump out of my fur. Yes, yes. I've got to spend a bit of time getting rid of the goosebumps on my tail now, and these mosquitoes aren't aiding the situation. HM? So dreadfully itchy. <laughs> he's, he's trying to say hmm, but he keeps saying HM. Uh, Alright, this time he didn't accuse the gyroids of starting a cult, which was good. A little further away, I found a gold mine, like a literal gold mine, and there's a cart full of gold, but it looks like it's about to roll right into the river. HM. A gold mine, you say? Well, that's quite a pricey discovery. Yes, yes, goodness, so much potential value. But, ah, uh, a cart on the verge of tumbling into the river, hmm? <laughs> quite a precarious situation indeed. Imagine the cost of salvaging all that gold from the riverbed, not to mention the ecological impact. My hands are already itchy thinking about the potential lawsuits. We'd need to invest quite a few bells in securing and ensuring the cart is stable and making repairs to the mine itself to prevent any future accidents. Quite the sticky situation indeed. Well, Whoa. every find has its flip side. Yes, yes. Remember, it's just business. Oh, what was that? <laughs> is he getting abducted by aliens? All right. I went a little bit north and I found a cemetery. It's a little bit weird because I'm not sure how these graves even work. Some of them are like hovering on top of water. Uh, also, I'm seeing some human remains next to a grave. So it looks like they tried to dig the grave. They tried to put the bones in there and they kind of missed, which I guess happens sometimes. <laughs> Motorcycle's back. It's just idling in the background. A hovering cemetery, HM? Seems like gravity's taken a day off on this side of the island. Yes, yes. Now, <laughs> as peculiar as that is, it does add a certain flair of the supernatural. As for the exposed remains, perhaps they're meant for a Halloween spectacle, or maybe it's a lesson in amateur grave digging. Ho, ho, <laughs> that's somewhat grim, yet intriguing, but it does concern me from a visitor's perspective. We might have to spend a few bells correcting this, perhaps laying some proper pathways. Finally, these constant mosquito bites are really adding to the horror element of this place. <laughs> Cocktail of itchiness and creepiness. Yes, yes. Let's press on. <laughs> it's not it's not the island's fault. I just want to confirm you're not holding the mosquito bites against the island. I think you are the one with the problem with mosquitoes. I'm not seeing any mosquitoes on this island. Ah, uh, you're correct. Yes, yes. My personal qualms with these pesky insects are mine alone. They shouldn't and won't affect Amberbrook's appraisal. It's just that these hungry little creatures do add an extra challenge to my work days, HM. Let's proceed indeed and disregard these minor nuisances. Ho ho. <laughs> you disregard them. You've got one mosquito bite this entire time. Did you say cocktail of itchiness earlier? I'd miss that. He says so many bizarre things that I think it just kind of washes over me. This house is just gorgeous. I have nothing, I have no notes. It's just really good. <laughs> Cocktail of itchiness. Oh, wow. Oh, there's a gyroid down here. Okay, maybe we can dig into this cult thing a little bit. I'm now exploring one of the houses on the island. It's a pretty nice looking normal house until you get to the basement. There's something very interesting going on down here. Someone's drawn like out of chalk, a big circle on the ground and it, it lit up as we came to the room. There's also cauldrons bubbling and a, a big soup cooking in the corner. And I also saw a gyroid playing a pipe organ. 
I don't. I just want to tell you about this. What do you think's going on down here? Barely see the gyroid, like right there. Well, well, a secret basement with chalk circles, glowing orbs, bubbling cauldrons, and soup cooking. Feels like we've stumbled upon a witch's headquarters. Yes, yes, quite the whimsical touch. Has its own charm, but also definitely raises some questions on safety standards. Kitchen and chemistry lab all in one. That said, a gyroid on a pipe organ? Yikes, my first stood on end hearing that, HM. Sends chills up my spine. That dreadful gyroid face behind an eerie tune. Quite the haunted house experience indeed. I'll need to take a moment to shake off another round of goosebumps. Yes, yes, these darn mosquitoes aren't helping either. A bit itchy, I must say. I'll need to take these factors into account in my final appraisal. <laughs> we just want to know, Tom, what, what's the deal? Why don't you like gyroids? See if we can get into this a little bit. Ah, a question I've pondered myself. Yes, yes, maybe it's those vacant eyes or their inexplicable ability to produce sounds without any visible voice box. Or perhaps it's the memory of an visible. unfortunate club gone wrong. I had tried to start a gyroid appreciation society once, but it quickly spiraled out of control and became rather cult-like. HM? <laughs> I had to flee from my own fans, quite a misadventure. <laughs> Ever since, I've been a bit wary around them. Somewhat of a trauma, you might say. Ho, ho, the itch from these mosquitoes may be driving me slightly batty too. Yes, yes, so there's my tail. A bit embarrassing, but factual to the core. <laughs> Gyroid Appreciation Society, a.k.a. gas. <laughs> So he does have trauma. <laughs> but look at this little adorable squeakoid. I like how he said they have no visible voice box like everybody else does. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. I don't know how to follow up on that. All right, well, I just want you to know, I brought that up because I thought we might find some more on the island, and I have indeed. There's a little squeakoid. A squeakoid is a gyroid, by the way, and it's in front of somebody's house, just squeaking away. Uh, there's also some other houses here. I see a bicycle parked in front of this one. Uh, the, there's this really adorable brick road and some awesome places. I'm seeing an area where you can actually climb up a mountain, and then you can look through some telescope thing and you can see in the distance it's such a nice area it's really cool up here uh oh there's a there's a truck there's a truck on the island Ah, another gyroid. Quite the populous island for these peculiar creatures. Yes, yes. I'll take your word for it being just a squeakoid. Quite the curious name, if you ask me. Now wait. A parked bicycle? I do hate finding parked vehicles on these otherwise pristine islands. They tend to get in the way and disturb the natural harmony I so cherish on these islands. It's just an unnecessary eyesore, HM. <laughs> I'm afraid that does factor into my appraisal, and not in a good way. On a brighter note... The brick road and the scenic spots sound delightful. Ho, ho. I can just imagine the view through that telescope. What a breathtaking panorama it must provide. The mountain seems to be an interesting exploration point as well. These details do get me excited about the island. Yes, yes. Phew, these mosquitoes are relentless, though. <laughs> Nothing spoils a perfect view like an itchy tail, HM. The intricacies of being a raccoon, I tell you. Let's proceed. I'm eager to see what's next. The truck is a coffee shop. I've made it to the beach. Now, don't freak out, but there is a truck here that is selling coffee. Okay? It's like a food truck that sells coffee. But it's okay because, listen, it's on a beach. 
and tide, the tide is coming in. So there's a really good chance this unattended vehicle gets swept into the ocean anyway. So when you're thinking about your appraisal, maybe, just maybe, don't charge for the truck because it might not be here by the morning. All right, I'm trying... I'm trying to do you a solid here. And you've already you already some fines to face because of the gyroids and stuff. Oh, there's another gyroid. Ah, a truck. <laughs> and on the lovely beach, no less. My paws are already twitching. HM, even if it's a darling little coffee-serving vehicle, it's still a vehicle. And such things are better suited to bustling city centers, not pristine beaches. Yes, yes. The idea that the tide could sweep it away is slightly reassuring indeed. However, the thought that we might need to salvage a coffee truck from the ocean floor is not as pleasant. Ho ho! And it won't do the local sea life any good either, I'm afraid. <laughs> my poor tail is twitching along with my paws, and these pesky mosquitoes are making it worse. It's simply the pits, I tell you. But okay, I'll keep in mind that the truck is likely temporary while making my appraisal. Onward then. <laughs> Ho ho! <laughs> HM. Oh my gosh. The catchphrases. Okay. Maybe we, we, we get the appraisal now. Well, Tom, we've come to the end of our tour of Emberbrook. It's time for you to give your appraisal. Okay. What is your island worth? There were a lot of things in this island. We saw a lot of stuff. But, I mean, we did kind of make him mad. Let's see. It's a long message. Buckle up. Ah, the moment of truth, yes? Given all that we've seen, Amberbrook is certainly full of charm and character. The fall aesthetic... Dirt paths, hovering graves, and scenic mountain views offer a wonderful blend of the mystical and the natural. It can't help but hold appeal, yes, yes. However, the gyroid infestation, the precarious gold mine situation, our eerie basement discovery, and the sight of unnecessary vehicles have given me pause. Even if that truck might be swept away by the tide, it's a matter for consideration. We can't forget about the hovering graves or the mistakenly missed <laughs> remains either. Ho, ho! Now, taken together, and with a fair degree of consideration, I'd estimate the value of Amberbrook to be, let's say 12 million bells. Yes, yes, that includes deductions for the vehicle removal, gyroid therapy, and the necessary safety improvements. Jeez. It also includes a premium for its unique quirks and character. It's a beautiful place, despite the itchy mosquito bites on this raccoon's tail. So there you have it, my appraisal for Amberbrook, HM. Wow. Congratulations, Emberbrook. 12 million bells. A new record. Oh my gosh. Unbelievable. Even after all the gyroids, the bikes, the floating graves, the human remains sitting outside the floating graves. Oh my goodness. <laughs> what happened to the economy? <laughs> I think I think something took a dive. The value of the bell crashed during that last reset, I think. <laughs> it's expecting like 100k. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um wow. Human remains are expensive. It's kind of the ultimate form of, of refuse, right? Like they're supposed there's a very specific place you're supposed to put human remains and someone just threw them to the side kind of messed up um it went from a million to 500k all the way to 12 million what a journey <laughs> first place is Emberbrook, i guess um oh my gosh okay <laughs> oh man that was funny all right 79 islands have been submitted at this point. Congratulations, HM. <laughs> it wants me to do 29. It was at 28. Now it just wants you to do 29. This number picker sucks. This is not a good number picker. 
It always does stuff like that. We've already seen 29. Okay. 34. Okay. Okay, <laughs> let's go. Um, it's another island. We all need gyroid therapy. I guess he accidentally started a cult, a gyroid cult, and now he's scared of them. Paying you to never show him rights again. <laughs> Five, eight, one, seven. Seven, three, eight, one. Seven, eight, three, zero. If this island has no vehicles or gyroids on it, it's River North from Everett. Everett sends this island. Um, if it has no vehicles or gyroids on it, there's a good chance it could take first place. Raise your hand if you're part of the gas cult. <laughs> the gas cult. Okay. Here we go. We have Eric, Fauna, Olive, Pekin, D Diana, Doby, Ioni, Renee, Deirdre, and Marshall. Everyone's kind of in the neighborhood up there except for a couple of them. Um, looks like, like a sunken pathway over there. Wow, there's a lot of cool stuff. Uh, all right. Cool. Um, I don't know where to go first. Is the airport over here? It is. It's almost perfectly aligned with the resident services, but not quite. So you opted for a jump puzzle. We're now on the island of River North, and upon exiting your airplane and you know getting off of the airport you are greeted with a mandatory jump puzzle okay imagine a pond but the only way to cross is by carefully jumping over some stepping stones and wrong one wrong move and you fall in all right i just want you to imagine that because that's what almost happened to me but as soon as you get to resident services there's a couple different paths you can take i took the one on the left and I found the tailor shop, and then just behind that, an antique shop with all kinds of very old treasures, such as a phonograph and a clock shaped like an owl, and a big expensive looking vase, and an, uh, an alarm clock, and, and all kinds of stuff like that. All right, let's see what he says. His answers are just not getting any shorter. <laughs> He's supposed to give short, like, couple sentence answers, and that's not played out the whole day. Ah, uh, what a unique way to start one's visit, HM. A good old jump puzzle just out of the airport. That's one way to keep visitors alert. Yes, yes. Although, we might need to discuss installing some guardrails for safety. Now, I must say, the proximity of the tailor shop and antique shop to the resident's services is delightful. Not only is it convenient for the residents, but it also increases foot traffic, aiding the businesses. Sounds quite an appealing setup. As for the collection in the antique shop, the phonograph, that owl clock, and the antique vase, these are sure to add class and value to River North. It's quite the trash lover's dream, vibrant with old treasures. Ho-ho! 
However, do we perhaps need to consider an insurance policy for such valuable antiques, HM? Proper mosquito repellent would also be a forward-thinking investment here, as I can already feel the itching coming on. Let's see what else lies in store on River North. Yes, yes. <laughs> he suggested that your antiques were trash and said that you should sell mosquito um, repellent. I love the, the little path down there. Like it's supposed to be this like big, big canyon that you're walking over. That's really cool. I headed north and I found a massive canyon that I'm crossing over right now. There's a narrow bridge that goes across with some really, really big railings. And after crossing, it brings me to some old ruins. And something inside those ruins seems to be on fire. It looks like someone tried to nab the treasure that was in there and they failed and probably were set ablaze. Ah, a canyon with a bridge sounds like quite the explorer's dream. Yes, yes. I must commend the inclusion of railings on the bridge. Safety first. Ho, ho. <laughs> it does sound like an impressive feature, adding a touch of thrill to River North. Now, these old ruins, such places tend to hold rich history and enticing mysteries. Or it seems in this case, flaming mishaps. Treasure hunting turned barbecue. That's quite the unexpected <laughs> twist. There might be need for some fire safety measures there, since we wouldn't want any flaming surprises. H.M.? Flaming surprises. Although the continuous bite of these irritable mosquitoes feel like tiny fire pricks themselves, so I suppose one must always be prepared for unexpected discomfort. Let's explore further, while continuing to itch. Yes, yes! <laughs> okay. <laughs> My goodness. Flaming <laughs> mishaps. Uh, all right. Wow. Um... I'm now approaching a haunted house. It looks like a grave has been dug and there's some bones. Someone's about to bury a body. There's a couple other graves too. There's a sign that literally says, enter if you dare. So because we're trying to appraise the island, I'm going to dare. I'm going to go inside and give you the rundown. I can't, I literally can't see. I know that's the point, but I mean, it, it, like, it's just impossible. A haunted house on the island, is it? Well, 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 adding a touch of the supernatural to River North, are we? A daring choice for the bravest of visitors? Yes, yes. The enter if you dare sign is quite the classic yet effective touch, don't you agree? Gives you that proper haunted house vibe. And graves with bones? Ho ho! It's just like our past encounter on Amberbrook, isn't it? Seems people do have some trouble with burying bodies properly. HM? <laughs> Occupational hazard for a grave digger, I suppose. Hope the interior is less spooky, fingers crossed, and hopefully, fewer mosquitoes. Their persistent buzzing and biting somehow adds an extra layer of horror. HM? Anyway, I await your courageous exploration. Yes, yes! All right, well, let's go in here. How does one properly bury a body, Tom? <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So far, so good. You sure do seem to know a lot about burying bodies, HM. Oh, that's creepy. Uh, I assure you, it's purely observational. Ho ho. Too many erratic grave sites around these islands. Yes, yes. My expertise lies in real estate and island development. The oddities we find are just part of the adventure. And personally, an expert in burying bodies. I leave that to the suspense of the horror novels I've encountered. HM, this raccoon is innocent and keen to continue the appraisal. 
despite the unending itch from mosquito bites. Let's carry on, shall we? Yeah, I'm not buying it either. Horror novels is a pretty convenient excuse. Oh my gosh. This is a legitimately creepy house. Oh, is there no basement? Oh, interesting. No basement in a haunted house. All right, well, I've concluded my tour of the house, and it was indeed very haunted, very dark, so it was very hard to see, and if there's anything that scary in there, I might have just completely blown past it, because ghosts just aren't good at using lights, apparently. Uh, but, you know, that's done, and now I'm just kind of walking around. I found a neighborhood, and everyone's got, like, a little front porch. There's no individual paths going to these houses, uh, so they're just kind of in the middle of nowhere, which is pretty interesting. What does that say? Flying saucer. Oh. Okay, we can we can work with that. Ah, a truly dark haunted house gives me goosebumps. Yes, yes, a poorly lit mystery tour. Now that's an experience, HM. But let's not forget the business side, HM. Enabling visitors to actually see the tantalizing eeriness does add to the appeal after all. On the other hand, your mention of this neighborhood sounds delightfully cozy. Front porches for everyone, a beautiful touch that adds a sense of camaraderie, no doubt. However, might it benefit if we invest in some individual paths? Joys of civilization and wilderness do need their boundaries. Yes, yes. As for me, I'm still battling this mosquito swarm. One more itch to bear in consideration for our future plans for River North. Look out for more unusual features and I'll be here scratching away. Ho oh. <laughs> ho! Gotta wait quick. Well, hey, don't go yet, because I just found something else you might be interested in learning about. There is a whole bunch of newspapers for sale, and the headline story is Flying Saucer. That means somewhere on this island is very likely an alien invasion, or maybe where at least one was spotted at one point. You can get wheat from Leaf on Harv's Island or when he visits. Oh, an extraterrestrial angle now, are we? Flying saucers and potential alien sightings? Quite the headline for River North. Yes, yes, that's sure to draw curious visitors. An island with its very own X-Files theme. Ho, ho. However, it does bring about its own unique challenges. Dealing with the unknown could mean extra precautionary measures. Increased security, perhaps. Add that to the challenges presented by the mosquitoes that persistently make me itch. Caution is key, but it's nothing we can't handle, right? Every mystery is just an opportunity in disguise, HM. Let's keep uncovering River North's secrets. Yes, yes. Very passionate. Yeah, Lee visits your island every so often, and he sells some of those crops. He sells pumpkins, bushes, things like that. He'll be, like, right here on some days. You can also donate some money to Harv's Island to get different people there, and Leaf is one of them. All right. I'm not seeing any gyroids or anything that would put him off too much. So we could try and get that appraisal and see what he says. All right, Tom, now that you know everything there is to know about River North, it's time to give your appraisal. What is the total value of River North? Obviously not finished. Should have updated the address. Forgot how much progress I've made since then. That's okay. It's still really cool. It's a really nice island. Let's see how much it's worth. Ah, River North. 
Indeed, a truly intriguing place, packed full of suspense, history, and even extraterrestrial secrets. Yes, yes! <laughs> From mandatory jump puzzles at the entrance to antique shops laden with classical charm, the island has showed us it hasn't shied away from the unconventional. There are a few hiccups, however. The haunted house may scare away some less daring visitors, and the general lack of illumination might require fixing up. The randomly placed houses might benefit from their own corresponding paths for easy access, and the grave with bones definitely presents an eerie image. Mm -hmm. Not forgetting, we have to remain prepared for potential extraterrestrial activities. Ho ho! The headaches from the Defense Against Alien Invasions insurance policy already make my temples throb, if only the itching from these mosquitoes would lay off. Now, keeping all these in mind, after carefully calculating and recalculating, I believe a fair appraisal for River North would be around the 10 million bells mark. Wow. It's a delightful place, with room for improvements for sure. Well, my work here is done until the next island adventure. Yes, yes. <laughs> there it is. 10 million bells for River North. Didn't quite nail first place there, but wow. The value of these islands just shot up. <laughs> oh, wow. Yes, yes. All right. <laughs> well, I just want to say thank you for an awesome time touring islands with myself and AI Tom Nook. Um, he might need a tune-up. He was funny, but he might need he might need a, a little bit of tuning up. I think. Uh, I want to thank composer Cleo for lending his voice to the character. It was a lot of fun. I've already acquired another voice for a future AI character, so who knows? You might be meeting them sometime later this week. Um, I hope you guys have an awesome week ahead of you. And uh, yeah, I don't know when I'll stream again. I'm, maybe I'll give myself a break tomorrow, but uh, soon, very soon. Um, and I want to get back to actually decorating this island for the challenge too. People are already beating the challenge, and uh, that's awesome to see. We have a Discord if you want to share any photos or, or chat about it. Um, that there's specifically a room for it. There's all kinds of rooms in there, so feel free to join our Discord. And uh, yeah, thanks for all the supers and the new subscribers. If you haven't liked on the stream, feel free to do that. And I wanted to say, I should have said this at the beginning, but I didn't. But for next time, don't be afraid to hit the clip button. If you guys see a moment you guys like, um, it helps me out. I can go in, I can see what clips resonated with you guys, maybe turn those into their own individual shorts. Um, it's more of a thing for me. If it's too distracting, don't worry about it. But uh, I just thought I'd mention you can do that too. Take clips. Um, all right, guys. Catch you later. Have a great rest of your night. And we'll see you.